pretty impressive first year at the helm for Marissa Mosley. More than doubled the conference wins for Wisconsin last year versus the year before. Nearly doubled the wins overall, and it was the first year for her. They had the greatest comeback in Wisconsin history, down 22 points in the third quarter to Purdue. Came back to get the victory. They are good enough to join us now. It is Marissa Mosley, Julie Pospisilova, and Hallie Douglas here as we're ready to talk some Wisconsin basketball. Um, Marissa, you've been on the job for only one year. Mm -hmm. You've already gotten a contract extension. <laughs> First off, who's your agent? Second, does he work with broadcasters? Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm not sure, but I'm sure he would be open to it. <laughs> Here's my real question. What does it say to you about the faith that the Badger administrators have to do that for you after only one year? Yeah, I feel incredibly um, you know, fortunate that Chris McIntosh and the entire department, and even we have a new chancellor, um, Jennifer Manukin, but um, you know, Becky Blank, who was our chancellor last year, um, all really believe in the vision of what I've set forth for this program and, um, and know that it will take some time, but they see that we're definitely on the right path. And you said that last year, like it, it's ridiculous to expect a, a one year turnaround. But that being said, what is it so far that you're most pleased with about the new direction of Wisconsin basketball? I would say um, really it's the people that we've been able to, I, I inherited some incredible people. We've been able to bring in some um, really phenomenal um, young women. And I think, you know, them, these guys who were great about establishing the culture last year, buying into what it is that I set forth is kind of the vision for what we wanted to become. And they really embraced that. And so at the end of the year, we could really have an identity of this is who we are and this is who we will become going forward. Now, Julie, last year at this thing, I asked you how your head coach did the first time she met you at saying post Pichalova. Your direct quote was really bad. <laughs> We've had a year. How's progress going? She has improved, definitely. Yeah? Mm -hmm. As has our Shall relationship. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of improving, you went from eight points a game two years ago to 14 a game this past year. Where do you feel you improved the most? Uh, I think I got better in like just dribbling and like handling the ball more and also my coach trusts me more so it helps me just like feel more comfortable on the court. What's she leaving off? She's a phenomenal um, shooter as well and she you know she wants the ball in big moments and we trust her that she's gonna make those shots. Now Hallie how would you describe the role you have on this year's team? Um, I think my role is just kind of like do whatever the team needs me to do. I kind of just try to do the little things really well and hope that I can help my team win in any way I can. Yeah. What did you improve the most on in the last 12 months? Um, I think I've gotten a lot better with my confidence and like my leadership role in this team. And I think that and just um, knowing that I can help my team in a lot of different ways and not just one single thing. So just being confident in like what I can do and not trying to do too much, but just help the team win in whatever way I can. Let me go down the line. Tell me, what does Sydney Hilliard bring to this team? She rings a lot. I mean, she's one of the most passionate teammates we have. Um, she, when she's in the gym, she's one of the loudest girls there. And I just think her passion is one of the things that stands out the most to me. I would definitely say energy as well. She always, when we are having practice with like rebounding and stuff, she always is the first one who gives a rebound and picks up people when they're struggling. And I would say competitive nature. You know, um, she is just a competitor through and through. She wants to win in everything she does, and that kind of is contagious amongst the team and really excited to have her back. When you look back at what happened last year, how would you describe the offense that you guys ran last year and its productivity? Um, I would say it was very uh, manufactured um, and some of that was by design in the sense of like I knew we had certain people who could do certain things and so we wanted to put them in those positions um, but it was also I, I felt like it was a bit restraining for our team um, and this year we want to make sure I know you didn't ask me that but that's where I'm going <laughs> <laughs> And this year, um, I, I have matured as a coach as well to understand, you know what, we have to be able to put them in positions to be successful, but give them a little bit more autonomy to make those decisions and confidence to do that. Well, let's combine your question and mine then okay. about <laughs> rebounding Okay. from last year yeah. to this year. Well, I think some of it is a mentality, right? Making sure that we are going and getting bodies on people defensively, offensively, that we're crashing hard. Um, part of it is recruiting. We went out and got got um, some more size, some more length, um, you know, intensity in the way that um, the players that we have coming in rebound. And I think 
these young women could attest to our, our practices. We have a lot more rebounds probably in this prac in these uh, what, first five months of practice than we had potentially all last season. So excited about what we're being able to do to build on what wasn't probably one of our strongest suits last year. Your coach has this joyful, fun energy. Who on the roster matches it the most? I think there's a lot of different personalities on our team. Um, I think one of them is Brooke Schrammick, who's my roommate, so I think I've seen her in a lot of different lights. Um, she's like a character, I would say. She has a lot of energy and a big personality, so that's kind of comes to my mind first. If it's not Brooke, who is it? I would say uh, Sarah Williams. They are very similar to each other, and they can like bounce off of each other. So Sarah Williams. For but no sure. one's funnier than the coach. Obviously. I mean, come of course on. not. Obviously, obviously. <laughs> they do want to play this year. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I uh, did. I do the math right. Seven true freshmen on the roster. Seven true freshmen. What is that going to be like? Um, you know, it's a, and it's an adventure every day. Uh, um, you know, if you have two freshmen, you're, you're going through it. So, um, I just, I, I like to go big or go home, you know what I mean? Um, but no, I think that, um, it has, they're so incredibly different and yet they all get along extremely well. Um, we have worked really hard to, um, try to, um, inter interweave the, you know, previous players with the new players um, and making sure from not just a leadership standpoint but on the court like our off the court chemistry will dictate our on the court chemistry and I think that we're in a much better place we've had to have some you know really um, interesting family meetings along the way but um, but no I think that's all part of, of the journey of what we're trying to do but it's exciting because with youth comes um, a little bit of you don't know what you don't know and so they kind of play a little bit with reckless abandon and we can always pull that back in but you want to make sure that you embrace that as well last thing um, I'm pretty sure basketball is played in basketball arenas but on November 11th, we're playing at a baseball field. What is happening? Uh, it's called trend setting. Okay, <laughs> it's called we're taking the world by storm. Uh, no, it's only the second time it's ever happened. Um, it, the other time was in San Diego. They played uh, San Diego, played San Diego State and the Padres um, baseball field. And so it's something uh, Coach Greg Gard had a vision for a while back. And I'm excited that we get to kind of piggyback on the experience. Um, I'm excited for our young women to play in the Arena. That's to make history anytime is awesome. Yeah. To do it doing the thing that you love is really, I think, even more phenomenal. I'm just worried about how the ball will bounce on the grass and the dirt. <laughs> I mean, I just feel like I feel like we didn't think that through. Wait, you know what? I think we still have some stuff that we've got to workshop here. Okay. But you know well, what? We got thank time. you. We, thank you for that. You know, it, what is it? It's October. We've got like a, a month. A for month. This. They can figure out how balls bounce. On, Easy peasy. On the we got this. Guys, we got this. Yeah, yeah. We, got we got this. this. It's yeah. not a big deal. You guys, the Wisconsin Badger women's team. Thank you for your time. Good luck bouncing on the grass. <laughs> oh, there is indeed, Mike, the top recruiting class in the Big Ten headed to Ohio State. Got a bunch of transfers as well. A team that has made it to four straight NCAA attorneys under Chris Holman returning just 23% of their minutes, the third fewest in the Big Ten, and hence a largely overhauled roster with eight new scholarship players. A couple familiar faces back, those at key and Justice Suing back from injury. Great to have both of you guys here along with uh, Coach right. Holtman. I'm going to ask the players first. And Justice, I'll start with you. You had a rough year last year. You only got to play a couple games before you ended up sitting out the rest of the year. How do you build chemistry with a lot of these new faces on your team? All right, building chemistry, man, is just us playing together every day, you know, um, whether it's in practice or even if it's outside of practice, just getting shots up with each other, you know, working uh, working on things that we need to improve on for, for this upcoming season. And also just spending time with each other off the court, you know, just getting to know each other. That always that always shows on the court as well. How about from your point of view, Zed? Uh, I just got to agree with Justice. Um, off the court is definitely big. You know, we hang out with each other a lot. And, you know, that's that's definitely big for our chemistry, um, you know, because we spend a lot of time with each other on and off the court. Chris, what's the biggest challenge as a coach? I mean, this is kind of the new day and age it of is. college basketball, right? I mean, you're maybe somewhat of an extreme example, but yeah. I don't think it's that unusual, frankly. It's no, it's not. I've talked to coaches, um, talked to a coach in the SEC who has 10 or 11 new players. Right. Uh, so it, it's, it's become commonplace, not every year, but you're going to have years like this. And I think to what you, you know, your point, Dave, I think building chemistry is going to be um, something we need to get to sooner rather than later. When you have this number of new faces, uh, there's some challenges. I think that's going to come from obviously being together. We did take a trip this summer that helped. 
but more than anything, we need to, you know, we need to spend time together. We need to get to games. Yeah, you mentioned that trip. You went to the Bahamas. What did you learn about your team there, Coach? Well, it was it was really good for us to see. I felt like the play of our four freshmen, as well as our three transfers, Justice uh, didn't play in that particular game, uh, was a, a really good. It was eye opening because we played quality competition over there, which we wanted to do, Dave. We wanted to be able to experience some quality competition, see ourselves in some adverse situations, and I just was really impressed with uh, our newcomers. And then obviously we had some returning guys who played played well. Zed, you're probably, uh, you know, in terms of the returnees, the, the highest profile guy, but I see you've slimmed your profile <laughs> somewhat. You you have worked a lot on your body. I he mean, has. You absolutely look great. You know, I, I feel you, like it's deja vu because we saw this with EJ last year. He came to media days and looked like a different guy. To what extent did that inspire you to kind of rework your body? Well, just speaking with the coaching staff, uh, they said that I had to change my body and, and – you know, I took that to heart, you know, working with a uh, strength coach in the weight room and, and, and the position coach, you know. I've been watching what I eat, and, you know, I've seen the results. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a good feeling to see the results like when you look in the mirror and, you're, and, you, and you know, like, you're down body fat and you're down, like, you're down a couple pounds and you feel a lot better on the court running up and down. Yeah, so how does it change things for you on the court? What does it allow you to do maybe that you couldn't before, and, and how does it – change the way you know positionally because you're you're going up i mean you're an undersized big yeah. in a league with some some serious bulk so yeah. is there a trade-off there definitely like you know when you when you drop pounds you're able to move a lot more you you get less tired easily and you know as you said undersized so you know it it helps trying to when you put the ball on the floor you're able to move uh, quicker and and be more versatile on on, on the court justice how about you health wise as i mentioned you missed all but a couple of games last year Give us a sense of, of what your recovery was like and, and where you feel you are right now. Yeah, just those uh, those past couple months, you know, or, or you know, especially during the season, uh, was one of the hardest times I've had to go through just with an injury in general, just being so close to coming back each and every time. But uh, you know, right now I'm 100 percent, 110 percent, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm ready. I'm ready to play, man. It's been it's been a minute, so I'm just really excited to get out with Zed, with Ice, our young core, man. I think that, that they're gonna they're gonna surprise a lot of people this year, and we're gonna have a really good year. What does Justice bring to this team, Zed? He's very versatile. Um, even when he's been back, you know, practicing, he can shoot the ball, he can put the ball in the and get uh, put the ball on the floor, get to the basket. So you know, he's definitely gonna help us out out, out a lot this year um, on the court. Chris, one thing that, that struck me the last couple of years versus very early in your tenure, and I know you've spoken a little bit about this, the, the defense was not, I know, yeah. where you want it to be. Yeah. And that's kind of been a big part of your identity. What what should we expect defensively from this group? Yeah, just quite frankly, it's it's not been good enough for us to get to where we want to get to on that side of, uh, side of the ball. I think we have clearly uh, been good offensive we've been one of the best offensive teams in the country the last two years fourth and 14th the last two years in terms of overall efficiency where we've struggled has been on the defensive end so that is I think that and rebounding are two areas that we have to we have to make strides and improvements in and um, that is going to be critical for us I do think we have some athleticism uh, and some length that will help along those lines, Dave, but uh, we were really good for our first three years, yeah. you know, upwards of top 20 in the country, uh, really in, on both ends. Uh, we, have, we have faltered on the, uh, on the defensive end last two years. That's a responsibility for us as a group to improve on. So we mentioned you've turned over the roster significantly. I mean, that was what we kind of led this conversation with. Tell us about some of the new faces who you think can contribute right away. Well, you mentioned our recruiting class. Before we get to them, I'll, I'll just mention our transfers. We have Sean McNeil from West Virginia, uh, who was a double-figure scorer there and obviously a really good program. Isaac Likely, uh, who's kind of a versatile bigger guard, um, who played at Oklahoma State, had a really good career. And Tanner Holden, who's got two years with us, uh, who played on uh, Wright State's NCAA uh, tournament team. And then four freshmen, we all expect to play an important role uh, along with the four returners we have. Um, Bruce Thornton, Roddy Gale, Felix Akpara, and Bryce Sensiball are four guys that we're going to really count on this year. Uh, to varying degrees, they'll go through ups and downs. Obviously, no one saw the, the, the growth that Malachi, no one saw that coming from January to March, his right. growth as a player. So you, you really fully anticipate you would have him this year, right? We did. Yeah, yeah we certainly did. We thought it would be a two-year process for him. Okay. And I think in his mind, honestly, he, he, he was looking at that as, as a, you know, two or three obviously uh, 
the play that uh, that he had, as well as, you know, we had a key injury with Justice, and right. it just allowed him uh, to flourish at a higher level. But we certainly did anticipate that. And that's why these young guys and the addition of Sean in the backcourt is really going to help us. You have called Zed the most interesting man in college He basketball. is. Yeah. <laughs> why? Yes. What makes him so interesting? Uh, he's got an incredible personality, for one. Um, and those guys uh, that are around him uh, would know. But he can fix anything at any time Dave and uh, he 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 has a, um, a just a, a varied interest you know I've coached guys who you know they love hoops and he loves hoops but he loves a lot of things and he might like like cars a little more than hoops right now which we're working on that. we're trying to get hoops above cars <laughs> yeah I saw you put out on Twitter you got what a 73 olds is that yeah, right 1973 Oldsmobile 98 yeah, and I mean, tell them about it. it you know, oh yeah, that's my car at home. <laughs> whatever I've, it does. I just re- recently purchased a 1994 Lincoln Town Car Lowrider that f- got it from Kentucky out here. Okay, it has hydraulics in it, so yeah, it's, pre- right. it's pretty. And so, pretty what, sweet. what do you do? Where do you tinker with these? Like, you have a garage where you can go play around with the cars? Or yeah, like I have a whole bunch of tools at my at my apartment, and you know, when something goes wrong and I have time to fix it, you know, basketball comes first. Uh, go out there and start fixing. You know, it's it's a good pastime. You know. To do right. something. Yeah, now, if he's not in the gym or in class, he's, he's with his fixing class. cars. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, now, Justice, you played the ukulele, which yeah. that strikes me as pretty <laughs> interesting too. Uh, what, what, like you know, I know you're Hawaiian, yeah. right? So, do you just break that out? Yeah, I mean, randomly? I, I, just... I stepped away from it for a minute just just because I haven't been at home. But when I had some time to go back home, it kind of kind of re I re-inspired to start it up again. And uh, you know, here and there, I'll play it. Show the guys I could play. They didn't believe me at first. They thought I was joking around. But right. I, I, I can I can get, I can get a few keys in there. All right. Yeah. Where where are you musically, Zed? I mean, if you're going to be the most interesting player in college basketball, are you are you musical? Can you can no, you I'm, match I, him note for note? No. <laughs> anything no anything with strings I don't don't do. But when I was young, I used to play like the saxophone and stuff. So yeah. you know, maybe I get them there. But anything with ukulele, absolutely not. <laughs> All right, well, this is a ton of fun, guys. Best of luck Thanks, Dave. this year. Thanks for spending Thank a few you. minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. with you. Our coverage of Media Day continues being real. One of those <laughs> things I've heard of, but I'm old enough I don't quite get. <laughs> but everyone who's younger, like a college basketball player, understands, and that's what the Husker women's basketball team is here. And we're going to talk about them because what a year they had last year. This is a 24-win team who made the NCAA tournament as an eight seed. They surpassed the previous year's win total by mid-January thanks to a 12-0 start to the year. Uh, Alexis Markowski was your Big Ten freshman of the year. Jazz Shelley had a triple-double, the fourth in program history. They led the league in three-pointers made. They led the league in rebounding. They were fun to watch all year. And they are joining us now to talk about it. Jazz, Alexis, and the head coach, Amy Williams. Um, Let's start with the big picture of last year. An 11-win improvement last year from the year before. Why? Well, there's a lot of reasons, but mostly because this team committed to competing and connecting and staying connected. And all year long, we watched them uh, celebrate each other's successes. We got contributions. We had some, uh, you know, great uh, additions to the program and coupled that with some just great returning leadership. And it just um, it clicked and and they uh, they played their hearts out for each other. Why do you guys think it was such a good year last year? I just think we had a team that wanted to come out and compete. We had a genuine belief that we could achieve incredible things, and I think that everyone bought into that, and we all had that common goal where we want to make a name for ourselves, and everyone contributed very nicely last season. Yeah, I think going off what Jazz said, like it just was a competitive, fun environment, and we all really thrived in it, and I think just this year, like we're expecting more than from last year. So. By the way, I had Jazz last year on our network podcast, and at one point I said, like, who does a good Australian action? She said, nobody. <laughs> and I said, well, let me test it out. And I did it, and she goes, that was actually pretty good. <laughs> it was. So you flash forward, like, three weeks later, I'm doing one of your games, and you guys won fairly easily, and so we had time to fill at the end of the show, so I did an interview, and we did, like, three or four questions, yep. and then they're telling me, and Mary, you got to do another one. So I was like, I have nothing else to ask her, so I just <laughs> said, oh, I don't know, Jeez, how do you feel about the exit? And you're like, ahem. Yeah, you lost it. It's not that good anymore. <laughs> Perfectly appropriate. Uh, that was my note. The Is first that... impression was good. The second one was a little, little, little over force. the top. Little force. Um, let's talk about the lady in the middle here. How did she grow throughout the year last year as a freshman? 
Well, I think she just continued to just gain confidence. I think Lex's superpower is she has a very, very strong belief, not just um, in herself, but in our team in general. And she gets other people around her to believe, and that is uh, pretty special. But From I a think, freshman last year, too. Yeah, yes, That's... yes, absolutely. And um, for somebody that um, just what we saw is as she started to really recognized that she was having success and could do some great special things and was putting up you know uh, good numbers and really contributing to our team uh, then the confidence just continued to grow and and um, we we watched her just really flourish as a freshman okay, so that's all positive what's she telling you the negatives where do you need to get better Alexis <gasps> yeah I think looking back on last year I kind of like had the mentality like every area of my game I want to improve and I want to be the best player I can be so like taking the offseason very seriously and um, putting off, putting in the work, and hopefully it's going to pay off this year. So I'm really excited for this year. All right, here's the crummy news. Sam's injury. Sam Hybe out for the year. How did that affect you guys? I can start. I mean, that hurt. She's one of my best friends, so it was really hard to see her go through that. And she's she's super strong, and um, she deals with stuff uh, pretty well. And this one, this one hurt, but um, our team really gathered around her and helped her out through this. Um, and we'll be okay. We have people that can fill in those spots, and we have people that we've had enough time without her to be able to try and fill in that spot. It's going to be hard, but she's on the sideline being an incredible leader already with just hearing the news. Who has to fill in for her? Who's getting those minutes? You know, we're going to look to a lot of different people to come in and try to contribute. Sam did so much for our team. She wasn't just, you know, a scoring threat and somebody who brought points to the table. She facilitated so much. She uh, was uh, one of our leading rebounders, was, you know, would handle the ball under pressure, just did so many different things. Defensively would pick up the ball in the backcourt and really try to, you know, slow people down. So um, there's going to be a lot of different people on our team that are going to have to take over those areas when you have a versatile guard like that that does so much it's gonna uh, not just fall on one person to step in and really um, fill in for her but uh, everybody can contribute a little bit and that's that's a special thing about Sam this team has really rallied around her and wants to elevate the bar of our program for our program um, in her honor it's such a, a bummer of a news because of how good she was and it's obviously unfortunate but let me let me turn to kind of the opposite side that's something that would bum you out what is something that makes your head coach the happiest? What is it that will make her, whether it's in practice or in a game, the thing that you're like, Coach Williams going to love that? When someone takes a charge, she's always yep. like, charge, mm -hmm. like celebrating like the hell out of it. And it's really fun. I would say she, she emphasizes loud, early, and specific communication. So if you have a big that's going to call that screen super loud and early, and specific she's gonna be very happy do they make you happy enough <laughs> they, do. they do they do I, I i could i think there are some times where we could have a little bit i, I ask for louder earlier and more specific -er. <laughs> <laughs> i like that i like that i'm using that jazz you told me once um you've got this great shot right obviously your production is unquestioned you said once your dad taught you to push down on your pointer finger on the follow-through <laughs> i never understood that will you show me what you meant by that yeah, so for the he wants like the ball to come out of like these two fingers so I can get the best backspin on the ball. So in my mind, I'm kind of just like if I force that finger to go down, I know it's going to come out of that finger if that's the last one Interesting. that follows through. Do you ever be like, that's wrong, your dad's wrong, I'll teach you how to shoot? Uh, absolutely <laughs> not. And if you knew um, Phil Shelley, he's kind of a shot doctor specialist, so we don't question anything that he teaches. <laughs> Let me ask you about a couple newcomers, uh, uh, a Maggie and a Maddie, a freshman and a transfer. Why did you want them in your program? Well, um, obviously, uh, Maddie Kroll comes from a team that played in the Sweet 16 one year ago. She's had a lot of college experience playing at a very high level, and, and she's just a competitor and knows how to compete, and she's a winner. So uh, we want that in our program. Um, and and Maggie Mendelson, just what a special athlete. I mean, um, if you have somebody that is a USA basketball and USA volleyball caliber um, athlete, um, she just has... Uh, she's she's really special and um, now that we've had a chance to kind of have her uh, work out with us a little bit this summer um, 
we've learned that she's incredibly coachable and uh, we're just eager to uh, have her have as long of a possible season as she can with Husker Volleyball. Uh, <laughs> but then uh, we'll be eagerly waiting for her with open arms when, when she's ready to come over. All that being said, there really isn't much roster turnover. And like so many teams, you know, rebuilding teams or established teams have a lot of turnover. What does this say that there there isn't much change in your roster this offseason? I would say that chemistry has never been an issue for our team, which is something really special. And we had to try and like build relationships early on in the season, and we don't have to do that this year. We have some incredible people that come in here, and they want to be a part of it straight away. And they're so willing to do everything that they can to be a part of this special group. And I think having this chemistry turnover, it's 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 awesome that we can just really just pick up where we left off and just get into practice and work even that much harder. Alexis, when during last year did it dawn on you, I can play, I can hang here in the Big Ten? Um, yeah, I mean, I think Creighton kind of uh, started a spark in me and um, that was they're a really good team and program and um, I had one of my better games in uh, the earlier part of the year and I think I'm like yeah like let's do this like I started building my confidence and and then we had a starter go out uh, during Michigan and I think just my teammates were like we believe in you like you can do it and just going out there and knowing that my teammates believed in me helped me to believe in myself and were you lying to her or did you really <laughs> believe in her we did we needed her and she she produced uh, last thing for you guys, I just kind of want to test the honesty level here. Are Jazz and Izzy insufferable? I mean, are they just <laughs> over-the-top Australian insufferable? Is it hard to be around them? If there was more Australians, I would say that, but, like, we kind of gang up on them <laughs> and mock them a little bit, so. Uh, Jazz, Alexis, and Amy, always great seeing you guys. It's going to be a fun year to watch you guys, so thanks for your time and have a great season. Thank you. Thanks Thank so you. much. Well, Mike, thanks. A lot of excitement around the Michigan Wolverines. What a run they have been. Five straight Sweet 16s. Gonzaga, the only other school in the country that can make that claim. And, of course, they have the big man in the middle back, Hunter Dickinson, deciding to return for Coach Jawan Howard. And speaking of Jawan, you may recall last year a little bit of a sideline incident with that guy, Greg Gard, but it seems like everyone has made up here today. This is coming out from Wisconsin basketball, making Valentine's Day plans. They will play on Valentine's Day this year, actually play twice in about a two-week span at the end of February. We are joined by Juwan Howard, Hunter Dickinson, and Jace Howard. Uh, great to have you guys with us. Coach, uh, obviously you guys having a little bit of, of fun with, with that. What was it like to be with Coach Guard today? Oh, it was great. Uh, Coach Guard is someone who I respect a ton. Uh, enjoyed having conversations with him over the years. And, you know, a very, you know, great coach. Uh, run a great program. And, it's just good to see you know we get an opportunity to catch up what did you kind of learn from everything that happened last year and what did you convey to your team well um, every experience is a learning experience and you can grow from it and that's something that I definitely did is growing from the experience that that went on there um, my team has done an amazing job of supporting me and and I've always told them that I'm not perfect and I would never ever walk into my locker room or in our practices and, and, and treat or them or say anything like I am perfect and uh, it was just great to know that uh, they trust me and uh, they have love and, and, and passion for uh, who's their leader and, and I just you know really admire and respect them uh, individually and also as a team. Let's talk a little bit about this team and uh, it must be nice to have the guy to your left back. Yes it is. Uh, <laughs> Hunter what, what uh, went through your mind as you kind of decided what what you would do whether you'd go pro or come back? Yeah, I feel like, you know, right when the season ended, uh, me and Coach Howard had a great conversation um, at the end of the year just talking about, you know, my plans. And, you know, he gave me both options, um, you know, both routes. He, we went over it pretty extensively, and, you know, I gave it some thought, and I just felt like I wasn't done with college yet. I feel like there's still more for me to do and just more for me to experience out here. Jace, what was the reaction of the team when everyone found out that news? Excitement, man. Uh, when you get a guy that you love competing with, a guy who's just a great dude on and off the court, um, it's, it's nothing but exciting. And we knew what we were capable of at that time, and still to this day we do. So when you get your premier player back for and you have aspirations to 
go to the Final Four, win the Big Ten Championship, win the Big Ten Tournament, and National Championship as well. And you get a great centerpiece like Hunter back. It just makes you more excited for the season. Jace, you guys had a little bit of an up-and-down year last year, but it did really feel like you hit your stride during the NCAA Tournament. Mm -hmm. For the guys that are back, how can you use that as a little bit of a springboard? Um, just that feeling of we don't want that feeling of not – being able to make or not knowing that if we're going to make the tournament again we want that security of that we're not going to put ourselves in that position we're going to make sure by any means necessary that we are going to make sure every day that we come into work we're not going to shortchange it we're going to not we're going to go into each rep with 100 percent and I feel like the guys really embraced that this season this off season you could tell that there was a sense of urgency with the guys we 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 are really looking forward to this year, and I feel like that what we learned last year, we're, we're all using it as experience because there was good and bad. We had great stretches. We had really bad stretches, but it's what you take from each one of those, and I feel like we're doing a great job of that. And with adding Joey from Duke, um, great program, and Jalen from Princeton, another great like program. Like it's, it, it just makes us that much stronger in the locker room for sure. Coach, it's interesting to listen to him talk, right? feels like maybe a little bit of an extension of, of his father. Uh, we've seen this. It's been really cool in this league, right, to, to have guys who are playing for dad, right? We've seen it in Iowa with the McCaffreys. Kirk Ferentz has had sons play for him. It's, it's just a really neat deal. And you're going to have two this year with Jace and Jet. What's right. that like as a father? Well, it's a proud moment. It is a very proud moment uh, just to see these young men growing up uh, so fast right before my eyes. And then now, you know, some of the most important years of their lives where they're young men and groom them into men, um, I got their attention at this moment now. You know, everything that dad has always said, it's always been dad talk. Oh, here come dad again. <laughs> and, and you have those rightful moments, and understandably, uh, you know, I get it. Yeah. Uh, but now dad is the head coach, and dad <laughs> controls the minutes. <laughs> so now they really listen to me, and it's, it's beautiful just to That's see true. the growth in them. But I'm just so proud of them as a father, and, you know, their mom has done an amazing job of uh, – preparing these young men for these day right here and they're still growing and they're growing so special so uh, Jet's going to be another one that's going to be a part of our family and uh, he's going to help us win games but he also is uh, embracing learning from these two that are sitting to my left. What's the best and worst part of playing for dad? Best part is he knows your game better than anybody else I feel uh, when it I, I he never had the Chance, well, we never had the chance of him coaching me when I was younger, but right. um, when I finally got to college, it was great to just learn from him, um, pick his brain every day. Like he would give great pointers and just like see how much that he's learned over his 19-year NBA career. Was it six-year coaching career? Yes. And um, even college before that, and now it's like you're really being able to learn from him, and, and it's people take that lightly, but it's a really big deal, and it's it's great. And probably the worst part is. Uh, well, me and Jack can both attest to this. We don't we don't get any foul calls in practice, so <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, no, that's definitely that's definitely the worst part for sure. But yeah, not getting no foul calls at all. Uh, Hunter, we were talking a little bit about your decision to come back, and and you really, I I think Jace used a great term, right? You're the centerpiece of this team. Uh, what's it like to try to incorporate your game into all of these the games of, of all these kind of new faces and new pieces that are around you what's the what's the challenge there uh, I would say the challenge is just trying to make sure everybody's on the same page when we're out there I think that's the biggest thing if you have five guys that are all on the same page connected um, playing for each other I think you know that that's a really hard team to beat and so I think for us it's just trying to still get a feel for everybody's play style um, nobody plays the same. Everybody out there has their own style of play. And so I think it's just a matter of, you know, everybody trying to be their own person, but within the offense. And I think, you know, we're doing a good job of that. Uh, this year, a lot of guys are doing a good job of playing for each other, sharing the ball. Um, and I think that's something that, you know, will translate to the season and translate to our success. You guys spent some time together as a team in Europe this summer. What, what did you learn about your team there, Hunter? I think uh, the biggest thing I learned is, you know, we still have a lot of room to grow. Um, our game in France showed us that, you know, we're not there yet. We still have a lot of room to improve. Thankfully, we still have, you know, a little bit, almost a month before the season, so we still have time to sharpen up some things. But I think this team really plays for each other. I think we do a good job of sharing the ball. And I think, you know, the pieces this year fit. We got a lot of shooting, a lot of experience, and 
we got a lot of talent. What were your takeaways of the European trip, Coach? Yeah, I would say the connection. Uh, it was great to see how connected our guys were. I thought it was a perfect time for us to really get away um, and spend 10 days away from our families. And where your family now has to become connected and become a true family uh, with the guys that were, like Hunter touched on, with some new guys that come in and then also had some guys that's returning um, for, the, for them to you know, go out there and compete and, and see where we measure and uh, give us a measuring stick on what we need to improve on. And uh, it was nice just to see how our guys were really dialed in to uh, growing with each other because I've seen teams before when you have a lot of new guys, uh, some of them don't want to be around each other because they, they, they really trying to fill each other out. But before that trip, um, we understood who we were and going on that trip, now we're coming back and where we are now, I think we are headed in the right direction. Hunter, before I let you go, I, I wanted to ask you, as scrolling through your social media, you're very active there. You are not uh, above an occasional troll job of, of Ohio State or Michigan State. What are the positives and negatives there of, of being that active, being that outspoken, and having fun with it, frankly? I mean, I know as a Michigan man, like, you're not, like, no Michigan State fan is ever going to like you. So it's like, why even try? I'd rather <laughs> them just, like, really hate me than be average. And so. <laughs> For me, I mean, I think it's funny. Like, I try to be funny, and I, I have a great time with it. And so I just I enjoy making fun of, you know, the little brother and Ohio State. So it, it's just fun for me. You comfortable with that, Coach? I'm comfortable with our young men expressing themselves. And that's exactly – I would never, ever hold anyone back from uh, getting a chance to really communicate on who they are and what they believe in. Yeah. And this young man right here and the, the young man that's next to him and also the other guys on our team, I love them all. I trust them. And that's the key, you know, and, and they, I think they know that. Right. Unless you guys disagree. No, I mean, Trust goes both ways, and I think it, it does for this team as well. So, yeah. Thank you. A lot of fun visiting with you guys. Have a great year. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Awesome. Go Blue. Go Blue. Go Blue. Basketball team, they won 15 games last year, led the conference in three-point percentage, and they are bringing in the highest-ranked recruiting class in the modern era for Minnesota women's basketball. But that's not the story. No, no, no. The story is what happened this offseason. That's right. Head coach Lindsey Whalen became a basketball Hall of Famer. The commissioner of the Big Ten giving her a commemorative ball. She is joining us alongside Alana or Rose Michal. We'll get to that in a second. <laughs> and Katie Baravich, the Hall of Famer. Lindsey Whalen, does that ever get old hearing that? Oh, man. Um, well, I guess it's only been a month, so I guess not, not really yet. Um, what was it that like? That was a nice – it was great. It went, uh, it went as well as could have expected, honestly. Yeah. I mean, the weekend went really well. A um, lot of people that I grew up watching and grew up idolizing that I got to meet and got to be around. So it was, um, it was a lot of fun. Today, that was a surprise, the basketball. That was awesome, getting that. Uh, we won't use that in practice today, that ball. <laughs> we'll use smart. a different ball. A little sandlot situation, um, using the wrong ball, right? Yeah, so, but no, it was, uh, it was a great, they did a great job out there. It was a great event. And um, What else do you get? Do you get, like, a jacket or a ring or a plaque or a? You get all that. Do you really? Yeah, you get all that. Uh, I get a jacket, ring, um, trophy, actually. Really? So, yeah, you get a lot of stuff. And, Can I have um, one of them? Well, we can talk. Okay. We can talk. Okay. We can talk. Cause we, cause we go way back. Um, <laughs> I don't know if everybody knows this, but uh, All right. but Mike Hall um, was on Dream Job. So I used, uh, I've known him. I've watched him since I was in college. So mm -hmm. 37 years, <laughs> 37 years ago, started watching Mike Hall on Dream Job. That's right. It was, That's right. and now I'll look at, I'll look at you now. Let's be very clear. This interview is about me. Okay, it's not about exactly. this team. It's not about the season. It's not about one of us making the Hall of Fame. It's about me. Mike, right. how's your family doing? <laughs> <laughs> They're great. How's everything? They ask about you all the time, Do by they? the way. Yeah. Man, that's awesome. All right, last thing on the Hall of Fame. How was the speech? Were we nervous? Did we practice it a bunch? Oh, my. Um, you know, I felt good about the speech. Uh, my jokes landed. Did that they? That was my biggest thing. Yeah, yeah, they did. I mean, of course they did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But uh, <laughs> the Burger King one was my favorite. Shout out to Burger King. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I felt like my jokes landed. I practiced it 
at least 30, I mean, I don't know, 30, 40 times. I bet. Yeah, so I was, um, I was nervous. Um, that was the most nervous I've been until this interview. <laughs> uh, my heart was just <laughs> pounding out of my chest. Honestly, it was. And as the thing went on, I was like the seventh speaker. And so as it went on, I got more and more nervous, oh, yeah. kind of like today. But <laughs> then I just, you know, I just put it, pulled it together, and um, it was game time. Yeah. Is, is your head coach all cocky now? Like, I'm a Hall of Famer. You know, if you guys disagree with her at practice or something, she was like, I'm sorry, are you in the Hall of Fame? Because I am. <laughs> no, but she had her one little moment in film. She was like, oh, yeah. can we not forget? Yeah. I was just inducted. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because we were talk what were we talking about? Oh. And then I said, listen, I can still bask. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, you was, said, I was can like, still bask. I was like, remember, it was, it was last weekend, Hall of Fame. But let's not forget about the yeah. Hall of Fame. I want to bask. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I can bask, I can bask. So there was, yeah, that's good memory. Good see, point guard memory, Pretty man. Smart. She's, she's the best. Pretty yeah. smart. Yep. Um, all right, Katie. Let's get to the the serious thing. We don't have to dwell on it, but it was huge news. What happened to you in the last year with the surgery? Tell us what happened and how the recovery was like for you. Uh, it happened around my freshman summer. Obviously, like it would have been. I was there for half a year because I came early. But, you know, I just had these little symptoms here and there. Um, and it was affected with the nerves in my legs. And I planned to continue playing basketball, but that didn't end up happening. I ended up having surgery in November. It's only coming up on, it's almost coming up on a year. Right. So, and then recovery was about. And by the way, surgery on your skull. Yes, on my skull, the back of my head. The thing I was most nervous about, they shaved off some hair. <laughs> Shaved okay. off some hair. Yep. Came back though, right? Came back. There we yes. go. Came back and I've been good for most of the summer now. What is it like having her back on the court? It's it's amazing. It's great. It's nice to have like, Katie has a great personality and like she has that dog in her where like everything is a competition. Everything's like competitive with her. So it's like a great thing to have because with her on the court, it's like getting us ready for game time. It's like, it's really good. She's very encouraging, you know. How do you handle, I mean, that's trauma for one of your players and your whole team has to deal with the lingering effects of that. How did you handle that? Uh, well, obviously, um, you know, not having her for a year was, was, was tough. It was, it was, it was tough on all of us. Um, but, um, you know, most, most importantly, her, um, she had to go through it. She had to go through um, the recovery and the surgery. And um, I know there was, you know, probably a lot of tough days and more tough days than any of us even know and so you know I think now like Rose said having her back everything in our practices just elevates everything the competition um, the energy just the spirit that the team plays with everything elevates when, when Katie's out there so um, so yeah it's just you know honestly um, you know, players like we, this is what we sign up for, and we go through different injuries and things like that. Now hers is, um, you know, that's significant. It shows her toughness that yeah. she's um, she's back, she's here, she's ready to work. And so um, we're just, we're, we're lucky to have her, and um, we just want to, you know, make the most out of every single day for, for all of our players. Well, speaking of toughness, here's my understanding, and we can get, we're back to the fun stuff now, is that Katie will wear shorts in the middle of winter. She, it doesn't matter how cold it is, she will wear shorts and that you are the polar opposite of it. I am told that you get cold very quickly. How much truth oh. is there to this? The other day we had, <laughs> the other day we had a film session and we're in her room and we're towards the end of it and she puts on a hat <laughs> just to cover your ears. Chilly. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, no, I'm a big, um, I'm, I, I'm You're obsessed so with the weather. I'm obsessed with the weather and I'm soft. So you have those two things combined. I'm obsessed with the weather. It's going to rain today later, by the way. So, you know, we got to kind of dodge some storms today, leaving practice. So, okay, okay. you know, make sure we're prepared for that. No, but so what I do, I hate being sick. So I cover, I have a headband that I wear. Then I wear a hat over the headband. I got to layer up because, right. you know, my ears, I hate when my ears get cold. I hear you. I'm with you. Before we let you go, I mentioned this at the top. Highest ranked recruiting class in the modern era for the Gophers. What has you most excited about this group of freshmen? Well, I think that just our, um, there's no question they're, they're extremely talented. And um, I, I think that just our, our team as a whole, just the way that they look at every single day, like they're excited to get to practice. You know, they're, they're excited to, no matter what 
the day before, whether it was, you know, good, bad, and different, they're excited to come to the gym. And that's, um, that's no question, um, the freshmen, but that's our entire team. Like, they, they have um, a certain sense, a certain vibe about them that they want to come in every single day, that they're, they're excited about what we're going to do, they're excited to see each other. And so that's infectious when you have a group that's, that's excited to be around each other, excited to work. Yeah. Um, that's infectious for all of us, and it's just been a lot of fun every single day. And I know I said last one, but this is the real last one. Does every player get to choose what their first name is, or is it just Alana? She can go Rose one day, Alana one day, Alana Rose one day. Like, does everyone have this carte blanche here? Just Rose, she's special. It's yeah. my alter ego, you know? Alana off the court, Rose on the court. It's two different people. <laughs> That's good. I like it. Yeah. I like it. It's I like great that. to have you, Rose. Yeah. It's great to have you, Katie. It's great to have you, Alana. It's great to have you, Lindsay. It's great to have you, Alana Rose. All of you, thank you for being here. Excited to see you guys this season. Yes. Most importantly, thank you, Mike. <laughs> You're welcome. It's Lindsay. about you. Hall of Famer, Lindsay Whalen. It is always about you, Mike. I, I like that Lindsay has caught on to that so quickly. Uh, the Nebraska men, here's what they did in the offseason. Four players in the portal, including Sam Griesel of North Dakota State, who's going to join us here in a minute. Bryce McGowan's moved on, was a second-round pick in the NBA. And this is a team that finished last year well, winning three of its last four. Uh, joined now by, as I mentioned, Sam Griesel, along with Derek Walker and Coach Fred Hoiberg. Uh, Coach, I'll start with you, but I'm interested in and certainly your take on it, Derek. Uh, Sam, you might have seen it from afar, but you did finish the year well last year. How do you use that as a little bit of a, a jumping off point here? We, we really did, Dave. Uh, you know, great seeing you, first of all. And, you know, I think it really gave us momentum heading into the offseason uh, just with how well we were clicking, especially offensively. We, we were a very high-powered offensive team at the end of the season, and we're able to show that to get a guy like Sam Griesel uh, who saw the way we finished to get an Emmanuel Bandamel, uh, who's a phenomenal leader, uh, you know, back-to-back double-digit score at SMU. Uh, and then Jawan Gary, another player uh, that we feel really good about. He won an SEC championship at Alabama and, uh, and went to the Sweet 16 with that team. Um, so, you know, finishing off with, with momentum uh, going into the season, we've watched a lot of clips with our guys about that, just how we were playing, the things that we were doing that made us successful, and also some things that we did early that cost us some games. And, you know, making sure we take care of the little things, and that's where these two guys have been so good, uh, you know, as far as making sure they're instilling the values in our team, doing the little things that are going to help us win a lot of those close games that we lost a year ago. Derek, what do you think it was? Like, what clicked late in the year that maybe hadn't been clicking earlier? Um, I don't know. I think it just clicked, uh, you know, because we, we had a really rough season. And throughout those games, you know, we came out on top. And I think after getting the first one, that we saw that we could just we could win more, you know. Um, and I feel like we, we wish we had more season after that. But, uh, you know, um, we don't know what it was. It was just a moment where it clicked, and we just overcame those, those late-game humps that we had always just had difficulties with. You know, it's interesting, Sam, you come as a player who played in the NCAA tournament, so you kind of have that experience. You've been where, where these guys want to go. How do you think you can use that as a, a means of, I don't want to say teaching, but kind of helping guys understand what it takes to reach that level? Yeah, I mean, I think it starts with off the floor. You know, I've, I've uh, something that we've really done a really good job of this summer is just doing good things in the community and, um, you know, just building that relationship off the floor. Um, and I think, you know, doing that, playing in the NCAA tournament my freshman year of college really helped propel me forward in my career. Um, kind of made me feel like I could achieve anything in, in college. And, um, you know, just bringing that mentality and that, you know, that work ethic every single day into practice um, has been something that I've tried to kind of implement into this team. And, um, and I think we have a, a really good base group of guys that understand that, and we're really seeing that lately in practice. So you are from Lincoln. So you're transferring back home. What what has this experience been like for you? I mean, I know you grew up as a Husker fan. What what's it like to be wearing that uniform? Yeah, it's uh, it's really hard to put into words. To be honest, um, it's been a dream come true the last five months, and being able to work with you know Coach Hoiberg and obviously the guy to my left um, has been a treat. And um, I'm just trying to take it day by day and really embrace the the moment. I know not everyone gets to live out their dreams completely, and this was certainly the number one dream that I had growing up. Um, and so just thinking about that and, and trying to honestly make, you know, that my 10-year-old self proud 
um, and be a positive role model to all the kids um, in Lincoln because, you know, I can see myself in their shoes and um, just trying to be the best person I can be, best basketball player I can be for this program. That's pretty cool right there. I mean, what's it like as a, a coach? To, it must not have been a very tough sell job. And, and there, if you wouldn't have landed him, you would have really been in trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I thought I did a hell of a job. <laughs> you know, the, the one thing that impressed me most about Sam on his visit was yeah. all he talked about was winning. He didn't talk about it. was really refreshing. He didn't say, how many shots am I going to get? What do you anticipate my points per game is going to be? Uh, all it was about was what I can do to help this team win uh, because he does have a passion for this program. I saw it a little bit, and I compared it a little bit to my situation growing up in Ames and playing for my hometown and just all the good that you can do and that can come from that. And, you know, I think the thing, uh, you know, when you look at Sam, he's, he's such an unselfish person, and he has done a great job, and Derek has done a great job, and C.J. Wilcher, who came back this season, has completely transformed his body. Uh, you know, some of the other players uh, from last year, Casey, uh, you know, you just see those guys, and some of the things that I think we lacked in losing close games came, uh, you know, from I, 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 the, this team is really bought into the chemistry piece. They spend so much time together off the floor, and that matters. When you have a genuine care factor for the other guy that's standing next to you out there on the floor, that's going to hopefully get you over the hump. You know, we're doing a lot of things right now, uh, you know, it's not skipping steps. And these guys are really bought into it, and it comes from these two guys right here. Uh, but also the other core group of leaders that we have. Emmanuel Bandamel is one of the best I've had. I compare him, you know, I've had some teams at Iowa State with George Niang and Monte Morris and Naz Long and Matt Thomas and guys like that. You know, I've got leadership like that on this team, and that's where it starts. And, you know, you, you put uh, CJ in that group, Wilhelm Breidenbach back healthy uh, now. Uh, Blaze Kieda, who comes in as the number one big junior college player in the country, won a national championship at Coffeyville. Uh, so we feel really good about this roster. One, from a positional size standpoint, you have to have that in this league if you're going to be successful, and also from a toughness perspective. We have toughness, this team, that will help us win an ugly game. You know, we didn't have that capability last year. It's interesting. I mean, I know it hasn't gone exactly how you expected that it would go at Nebraska. Do you do you see it more as just kind of it was situational? Or, I mean, are you going to continue to kind of play the style that you played? Is it just a matter of doing what you do better, or have you – rethought it in any way yeah, i mean there's some core things that, that we've always done with our system and and you know one thing about sam with the ball in his hands at the point guard position he's very hard to speed up you know we've got some really good on ball defenders that can pick up full and it's just it's hard to speed this guy up with the ball in his hands uh so you've got great poise in in your your floor general out there on the floor and we've got other guys that are certainly are capable we play through Derek a lot you know we feel his efficiency uh, as a front court player, 67% from the floor a year ago, and also a high assist uh, guy really at the five position. So, you know, we feel good about, you know, again, our veteran players. We got older this year as well, which is important, uh, you know, with some five year guys, Derek in his sixth year now. So, you know, but we feel fortunate to have him back because, De listen, Derek had a chance to go start a professional career. Right. But I think he saw with what we were bringing in and adding to our team. Uh, that he wanted to be a part of something special. That's why he came to Nebraska, you know, to get us. That's why Sam is going to be, you know, wearing a Nebraska uniform next year because he sees the potential of what this group is capable of doing. Now it's about living that out and going out and doing it every single day that we take the floor. Derek, Coach talked about your sixth year. You're already looking to your future, not just in basketball, but you purchased a semi-truck <laughs> yes, as sir. well. Tell me about your <laughs> your burgeoning trucking business. <laughs> um, you know, um, it was something that I did just because of, you know, this world, this, this age, um, everything's about entrepreneurship. Um, everything's about um, kind of having something in your name to build off of um, alongside with having NIL. Um, so it just creates a lot of opportunities for not only just me, but also so many other former athletes, you know. Um, I would love to someone see me start a business and go, hey, I can I can go start something else as well. You know, like I can I can do something instead of doing small things like clothing and stuff that just only keeps you in business because of relevance. But um, so it was just something that, you know, I just sat down and just kind of start using my brain for the first time. And was just like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> what can I do to just just helped me alongside um, while playing basketball. So did you hire a driver? Is someone driving around for you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I hired a driver. Um, his, his, uh, the driver I hired, actually, his best friend played for us my red shirt year, uh, Kevin Cross. So uh, so I, I know him personally. So yeah, it worked out kind of for the best. That's an amazing story. Congratulations Thank you. Thank on you. that. I appreciate yeah. it. Pretty cool. Derek, Sam, Coach. 
Really a pleasure to visit with you guys, and best of luck to the Huskers this year. Thank you. Basketball Media Day rolls on. We turn our attention to the Michigan Wolverines. No big deal. Three seed in the tournament last year. Made the Elite Eight for the first time ever. They hosted the first two rounds of the NCAA tournament for the first time ever. Had a 25-win season. Had the Big Ten Coach of the Year. They had it rolling in Ann Arbor. And they were so good, they had dance moves that just translated. That just... (laughs) It, you know, universally accepted and adored dance, except for Layla. Layla seems to be completely uninterested in dancing. Emily Kaiser was dancing, but Layla Filia not. Kim Barnes Rico was. Uh, Leah Brown was. They're all joining us now. Do, do we need to defend dance moves there for a second? No, that wasn't that wasn't my actual dance moves. I was trying to be like Coach. That's not actually how I do it. Are you saying there's something wrong with the way Coach dances? No, 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 not at all. Can Just, you show us your actual dance no. moves? Show us. I would like, I would like that. There's not enough space. Right oh, you here. need space. Maybe like, <laughs> guys, can we move the camera back so there's enough space for her to? Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, let's start with this. All, we'll go all the way down the line. Coolest part about playing in an Elite Eight? What is it? Yeah, I get to start? Yeah. Well, I thought it was pretty cool when we hosted, the Maze Rage came out, and pretty much all of the state of Michigan came out. <laughs> so it was an incredible, incredible atmosphere. But then to advance to the Sweet 16 and the Elite Eight, to do something that hasn't been done, we're going to hang another banner, and that's something that we always talk about as a team. So that was pretty cool. We had a great group of, great group of players, and it was amazing. Yeah, I think just like thinking, looking back and thinking like the significance of it. Um, I think when you're in the moment, you're kind of just focused on the scouting report um, or you're, you're focused on who you're going to play in your team. But I think just the coolest thing for me is looking back and just realizing like, wow, we made we made the Elite Eight and like something that not a lot of people get to do. Um, so, yeah, I think that was pretty special to me. <laughs> so something that I really took away from being able to like play in the Elite Eight was just being able to like help my teammates and be able to go through all of it with my teammates and knowing that everything like everything that we've been through and as me like coming in my first year the biggest thing I wanted to do was help my team because I knew where they left off the year before so I feel like that was just really special to me and just being able to have that like environment where you guys are all like you're close you're together and just that all like really pitched in so and the thing to remember too is you did it with that double zero dead weight that you guys just had to lug around the court, that Hillman character. I mean, that's the impressive thing, is that you did it despite the fact you kept giving her playing time. I mean. Unbelievable. And she and she followed us here today. I mean, you know, everywhere we turn, there's Nas she Hillman. Loves us. She yes. loves us. What's going to be the hardest thing about not having Nas on your roster this year? Yeah, I I know everyone, everyone, every coach, every person here talks about Nas as a a basketball player. Um, But I think for me, it's just seeing her smile and seeing her inner beauty every single day and just how passionate she is about everything that she does. Um, It's totally not the same, obviously. But I'm actually excited as a coach to see what new direction our team can take this season. Um, You know, we we kind of went back to the underdogs and we kind of have a little bit of a chip on our shoulder and um, and something to prove. And we have two phenomenal guards who I think are two of the best in the country right next to me here today. And I think they're you know, they have something to prove and we have something to show that Michigan basketball is still here, even without the dead weight. The dead weight. See, I had him say something nice about you, Nas. All right. there's someone next to Nas here who's with you, Emily Kaiser. Um, she can rebound, she can score. Explain to me how valuable she is to your team. Emily Kaiser, she's a very valuable player. Um, I love playing with her. Her IQ for the game is tremendous. And just being able to like be on the court with her and just knowing like she takes the extra charges, getting those rebounds, she does all like the little stuff. And I feel like that really plays a really big role that people don't see. So. Being able to like play out there with her means a lot to me. What about you? Yeah, I think Emily does a lot of the intangible things that you don't necessarily see, you know, on the stat sheet um, or don't really aren't super flashy. Um, like Layla said, whether that's taking charges. Um, I know she's been the she's kind of been my backside a few times getting beat in some one on one defense. So, uh, yeah, definitely. I think defensively she she can help us a lot. And then offensively, just having the experience and the IQ like Layla touched on is just really, really um, helpful for us, especially. 
we are used to her being on this team. We are not used to Greta Camp Schrader, a transfer in from Oregon State. What made you interested in bringing her on board? Yeah, I've watched Greta play since she's been in middle school, um, and she had just been a tremendous player in the Midwest. And I know when she was looking to to transfer, um, you know, we started talking. It would be an opportunity for her to be closer to home, where her family could see her play all the time. And she just was such an impact player that could play every position, one to four, really. Super strong, can defend a post, but can handle the ball, and an exceptional, exceptional shooter. And she... Um, like Leah, I think one of the things that just spoke volumes to the culture of our program and the players in our program is she was attracted to the way that we played and the style that we played. And we had an opportunity to play against her team this year, and she said, you know, I just love the intensity at which your team played, and I want to be a part of that. And I just think that speaks volumes. You know, even with losing a tremendous player like Naj, yes, we've lost a tremendous amount, but we are still – going to be the hardest working team in America and we're still going to play our butt off on every possession and we're still going to play with energy and play with fire and have fun and I think Greta completely fits into that mold. Before I let you guys go how often is she just kind of like you know I'm the coach of the year right I'm the big (laughs) 10 coach you see that is she just sticking in your face all the time? Oh all the time yeah (laughs) I think we hear it probably every day at least. Do you agree Layla? Leah is so wrong. (laughs) I don't. (laughs) There it is. The perfect way to end it. Yes. Uh, ladies, thank you for your time. Congratulations on the year last year. Best of luck this upcoming season. Thank Thanks you. so much. Thank you. Yeah, Tom's done fairly well for himself. Uh, here's what's going on with the Michigan State Spartans as they head into this season. My 24 straight NCAA tournaments led by the winningest coach all time in the Big Ten. Definitely some turnover, though. Top three scorers gone from last year and the non-conference schedule is absolutely brutal for coach Tom Izzo here with Malik Hall and Joey Hauser as well welcome fellas thank you so much for for taking the time out uh coach I'm going to start with you you signed a new deal in the off season you declared yourself once again a Spartan for life what do you envision for let's say the next five years for this program what's your vision of where you want it to go well, I do. I wanted to step up a notch. You know, I think we went through the the 20 season. I think we were good enough to be in a Final Four. We were playing so good at the end of the year. Um, you know, Cassius Winston's, you know, right. senior year. And then COVID hit. And then the next year, you know, it really hit us in the middle of the year. We were one of three Big Ten teams. And so our standards have dropped a little bit. But the difference with our program, we, we rely a lot on development. We're not going out and just, you know, plugging guys in we rely on development when you miss a summer of development when you when these guys are really young when you don't get to do the same things it set us back a little bit but so my wish for the next five is that uh, we're competing for big 10 championships and final fours every year you guys are playing for a legend I'm sure that is not lost uh, on either one of you I, I'm interested from both of you Malik I can start with you What's it like to play for Coach Izzo? What's the best part of playing for Coach Izzo? And the and worst. What's the worst part of playing for Coach Izzo? <laughs> um, I definitely say the best part is that he cares for you. You know, everything on and off the court, you know, he's always going to look out for you, make sure that you're doing well and make sure that you're okay and, you know, just try and, try and better you as a person and a player. Um, the worst thing, I don't really think I don't really think there's anything I'd give that's, it to him. <laughs> that's, that's that horrible, quite honestly. Yeah. Uh, I, th- I think he does a great job all around, honestly. Sometimes we may perceive it because we're younger. We may perceive it a different way. But I think I think he still all around does a great job. Joey? I would say the best thing about playing for Coach Izzo is that he's going to be your biggest critic but also your biggest supporter. Um, no matter what, he's got your back. Uh, who he is during your re- recruitment process is who he is as a coach. And the worst thing I would say uh, is probably winter break. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? A solid choice. A lot of practices. A lot of practices. Uh, yeah, no break. Even though he got no school, there was no break, man. Two days for sure. No rules then, man. We got clear. Guilty as charged. Guilty as charged. Guilty right? as charged. <laughs> you don't have to abide by the 20 hour rule. No, no. Break. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, Malik, preseason all conference pick. 
What does that mean to you, to, to be seen as one of the elite players in this league? Um, I, I count that as a blessing, you know, just to have some, to have anybody that just kind of voted for me and th thinks that I'll be good enough to, to be able to, to compete at that such a high level this year is, is something that, I, that I'm really thankful for, you know. Um, I believe in myself and I, I'm glad somebody, some other people are starting to believe in me too. How does the center position work for this team this year and, and how does Joey fit into it? Well, Joey, we're, we're going to play with these two. You know, Joey's been bugging me for two years, and they both had great summers. But, uh, you know, Marty Sissoko will be our center, and we're going to be a collection of guys around him. And uh, we could go small ball once in a while, you know, and but Malik is going to play the kind of the three, I guess you call it, and Joey the four. But in our system, it's going to be a point guard, and it's going to be a center, and then there's going to be four guys, and these two guys – have really shot it well. They've worked on their shooting. I think uh, Malik, until his injury, he got a little sprained ankle-like thing a couple of weeks ago. I was shooting it really well. Joey's had an incredible summer and fall shooting the ball. And I think that uh, they're ready to have breakout years, you know, and and uh, we're going to need that for us to be great. We need our point guard to be solid, our center to be competitive, you know. I mean, uh, Marty has made some progress, but... Uh, so that's where we'll be, you know. We'll be uh, not the biggest team we've had, but I think with Malik playing some small forward, uh, he's going to have to rebound well from there to make sure that we do our job. It felt like the point guard situation was one where you had a bit of a question mark last year, and I would say by the end of the year it turned into a real strength of your team. How can you carry that forward? Well, it, what, what turned out to be a strength is that uh, both A.J., and uh, Tyson Walker played pretty well together, which yep. they will play a lot together. I do think Jay Nakins has made big progress too, and and he's going to be very helpful. But thank God, uh, you know, AJ continues to work on his body. He's lost some more weight. I think he's playing really well. I think you guys would agree. He's For passing sure. the ball. He is a elite passer at yeah. times. Sees the court big, strong enough, can defend anybody. And in Tyson. They kind of play off each other, but he's played really well with these guys. He can play the one or two. We're almost going to have two point guards on the court quite often, and that's going to help too. And uh, I think it is going to be a strength. I think your perimeter play has to be strong. We have to be a better shooting team than we were last year. I think both these guys can help in that area. You and I were talking a little bit about the schedule. Even by your standards, the non-conference schedule is a little bit on the daunting side. Right, you've got Kentucky, Villanova, Alabama, Gonzaga on an aircraft carrier. Notre Who am I Dame, missing? Notre Dame, right? Maybe yes. UConn or Oregon. And it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be an incredible first seven, seven of our first eight games. And yet we talked about it all summer. That's been the battle cry for us, you know. Prepare for it and understand we could be damn good and lose five of those games, you know. I mean, right. I've been two and seven before in 2003 and came back and almost won the league. So. We're always a big picture program, but we're an opportunistic program. And how can you pass up? How can I not give these guys a chance playing an aircraft carrier? That's all Draymond and those guys talk about. And uh, if you want to be the best, you got to play the best. And, you know, uh, starting out almost second and third game with Gonzaga, Kentucky, um, Notre Dame, um, those are good games, Villanova. Good those are, games. Those yes. are really good games. But I, I, I think that's why they came. You can ask I, I, Well, I mean, that's what I was going to ask you. I mean, so, Joey, I'll, I'll start with you. Malik, I'm obviously interested in your thoughts as well. But you see that schedule. You know you're going to be have a ton of eyeballs on you, and you're playing really high-profile opponents. What goes through your head? That's why I came here to play. Um, you know, I've been through college basketball for three, th three seasons now. And um, each year we've had some big games, but this year is going to be – uh, we really stacked them up, man. Each uh, non-conference game is going to be big, and it's going to prepare us for the Big Ten season for sure, and that's that's what you want. How about for you, Malik? Uh, quite honestly, I think it's going to be probably one of the most exciting times of my life, you know. Um, every kid, you dream of, of the big games, the bright lights, you know, the, the field stadiums, field arenas, you know, stuff like that. So, so why not book it all, you know? Let's, let's go all in. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> you're you're certainly like that. going all in. <laughs> Coach, you, you talk a lot. I mean, look, you're one of the elder statesmen of this game. You're one of the most respected voices in this game. College basketball is changing a lot, right? And you, you get a lot of questions about NIL and the portal. What's kind of the right balance? What's the right formula in your mind? You know, I don't know anymore. I mean, I have my feelings on both. But uh, the NLI, I think we, def NIL, we definitely should have done more earlier. 
whether they're going to be able to keep that in some realm of of stability that can maintain itself uh, you know that's that's what i worry about right now um but in the transfer portal i just worry because i think a lot of kids will make bad decisions you know i think it's already happened and uh you know we've tried not to be in it much for a reason i think i owe it to these guys why am i going to go out and get a 50-year guy to replace somebody uh you know it's my job to develop them it's their job to be developed now if they don't do their job or i don't do my job then I think there's other things. But I'm a little worried for the players because I think I can tell you, I can name them right here, Morris Peterson, Draymond Green, Denzel Valentine, Xavier Tillman. They all got drafted in the first round, and they would all left after their first or second year because, you know, there's a process, and nobody wants to look at the process anymore. We try to want to develop our guys. If we can develop them in one year and they're gone, great. But uh, I believe in the culture, and I believe – in the players and uh we're going to be loyal to the guys we got and push them maybe that's a problem push them a little harder but uh yet to be seen what's going to happen with all this i i just i i hope that what we're doing is sustainable and that we're not just jumping in jumping out of something you know malik uh, i was looking at kind of what you've been up to and uh, nil wise you just had a great opportunity right mm -hmm. with aj hogard you guys yeah. ran a camp Mm -hmm. Give people a, a, a sense about that, which is, I'm sure, something that yeah. you, right? I mean, that's, oh, that's a, great. An amazing opportunity. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about it. Um, so we just, uh, there was a local high school, uh, somebody had reached out and said, hey, we're looking to, to run a camp in East Lansing. And I was like, all right. Like, and they just, they said, they said they wanted AJ to do it. So me and AJ both just agreed. And, you know, it was a chance just to be around kids, and, you know, kind of like pass the knowledge as, as coach always does for us, you know people you look up to certain people and those kids kind of looked up to me and AJ so we just wanted to be able to to kind of give back to them and also you know just be able to teach them something about the game and hopefully just make an impact on their lives what was the best part of it oh go ahead coach well I was going to say Dave that is the true NIL 100 percent you know yep. it's not pay for play it's the true NIL and I think I like I'm 400 percent for all that yep. you know because I think these guys deserve that and Hopefully they do, and they've done some good things. Joey's done some good things. Uh, there'll be a lot of great things we can get out of this. It's just how we can keep it somewhat manageable. Yeah, no, it's I'm it's sorry. fascinating stuff. No, uh, I no, I th I think look, it's it's really interesting, and I'm I'm with you. I mean, I think like a camp, what an amazing opportunity, right? Yeah. Why wouldn't you be able to to do something like that? Exactly. I, I want to leave you guys with this question, and and I'll I'll leave it for the players. Who's the player that maybe people don't know about? that could take the biggest step forward for Michigan State this year? I would say probably Jay Nakins. Um, you know, you, you saw glimpses of it his freshman year. Uh, extremely athletic, uh, really good player, defensively and offensively. Um, and he had a really good summer, too. He can shoot the ball. Uh, he can handle the ball. Like I said, he's extremely athletic. So I think you could see him take a big jump for us. Malik? Uh, same with me. I, I really? Think, I think he, you know, I, I've been behind him since he went to Sunrise, you know. So I just, I think he's going to take a huge jump. He's put in so many hours in the gym, and, you know, you can see his dedication, his passion for the game, and it, it's definitely going to pay off for him. How about in the non Jaden Nakins category? Who would you pick? Well, you know, who's got to make, you know, to me, these guys do. And I'll tell you why these guys do. I don't think it's a surprise. But I think they need to take it to another level because your veteran guys got to be good. I mean, we're going to get more out of Holgert. He's been a lot better. And I really like what Tyson ended the year. But these guys are stability, are size. They're the guys that are multidimensional. We, we, both of them are very good passers. Both of them are very good shooters. Both of them can defend. I think that's an area Joey improved on. I think you improved on your shooting. Uh, everybody made some improvements. But yeah, Marty's got to you know be a surprise because nobody knows, and he's been pretty good. He's been but good. He's made I do like their Jay Nakins uh, theory. I, I think uh, you know uh, Pierre Brooks has made some some improvement too. Who can really shoot the ball, but probably uh, players are always right, man. In my <laughs> program, I always agree with the players. <laughs> Always such a pleasure to visit with you, Coach Malik, Joey. Really enjoyed it. Best of luck, guys, and look forward to watching the Spartans on the aircraft day. carrier. Thank you for Among other you. places. Back on our media day special, Micah Shrewsbury. His first season at Penn State was a good one. Really set the tone for who they want to be. Top 50 in the nation in defensive efficiency. They bring back their top two scores, Jalen Pickett and Seth Lundy, and. 
added some transfers out of the portal in addition to the most highly touted recruiting classes in school history. And we are joined now by those two top returning scorers, Seth Lundy and Jalen Pickett are with us alongside coach Micah Shrewsbury. Uh, guys, let's start here. Uh, it was your first year last year. You're, you're bringing in a new culture. You're bringing in a new philosophy. What did you feel best about one year in? I think for us, how we competed, right? That was a big thing for me was how do we stay in games? Uh, no matter if the shots are falling or not, if we compete at a certain level, I think that'll help us. And we did that, and it kept us in a lot of games. I think half of our losses in Big Ten play were six points or less. So now it's about how do we push through to turn some of those losses to wins. But I feel good about the culture that we set um, and the culture that these guys are continuing to help us with. You know, it's interesting. I always think when I think about culture, it's, hey, how do you define it? It's almost like, hey, give me a sentence or two of what your program's about. So you guys are, are one year in. You've been a part of this culture. I'm interested in hearing from both of you. I can start with you, Seth. What is the culture? What, what is Penn State basketball in a couple well, sentences? Yes, coach always emphasized uh, gritty, not pretty. So uh, I feel like that's definitely something that we build off of every single day. And uh, we go into practice with that mentality. And uh, I wear it every single day on my wrist. You know, I just look down at it. And uh, that's just the mentality that I have and that our, our whole team have too. So, Jalen? Definitely the second what Seth said is um, gritty, not pretty. That's what we do. We're going to be a tough team on the defensive end, but then going on to the offensive end, um, we're going to share the ball a lot, um, shoot a lot of threes, and we just love to see each other um, be great and, you know, bring success to Penn State. You guys won a couple games in the Big Ten tourney. In, in what way do you believe that can be a springboard here, Jalen, into this year? Uh, definitely. We look at how we ended the season last year. Um, we felt like we ended it somewhat on a note we wanted to with the way we played and how well we competed, and we feel like we could just bring in guys to build off of that. You know, it's interesting, too. I mean, you guys beat five NCAA tournament teams in Big Ten play last year. What can you learn from those successes, Seth, that, that you can, you know, again, kind of use and, and say this is the team we can be? Uh, yeah, I feel like we know that we're one of the, uh, the better teams in this conference. Uh, I feel like we just have to, you know, capitalize on some of those close games. Uh, our season's a lot different if we turn a lot of those losses into wins. And uh, we know that going into the season, so, like, we capitalize on that every single day in practice. And, uh, well, like, we just learned uh, we learned a lot of lessons last year, and uh, we just building off of that. And uh, we just have a lot of confidence going into the season. What's the message to the guys coming out of – the first year based on those successes that we talked about last year but also on not being where you want to be obviously ultimately as a program yeah I, I think we always want to strive to be our best and you know somebody said it yesterday if you're in this league you're in it to win right? we're not just in it to be close we're not just in it to have our name called at a certain point like we want to get to Sunday in the Big Ten tournament right we want to play beyond that uh, so that's our goal that, that's what we're trying to do uh, but at the same time, how we play, how we defend, how we share the ball, uh, we just know that like every single night when you play Penn State, you're going to be in for a fight. And we're going to be in the game. We're going to give you our best shot every single time. You guys played a really deliberate pace last year. And you and I talked about it a little bit when I did a, a couple of your games that part of that was just out of necessity. That was kind of who you needed to be. Obviously, the defensive piece is non-negotiable. That, yeah. That's that's who you are. That's in, in your DNA. But how do you see your style of play evolving? Is it going to evolve this year? Is it going to evolve two or three years from now? What's the, what's the balancing act there? I think having guys that are familiar with what we did last year, how we play, um, but having more depth. I, I think how we're going to play will be a, at a faster pace. You know, we're not going to be the, the – 87 Lakers or anybody, but <laughs> we're still going to play at a faster pace. And whether that's pushing the ball in the full court or playing at a quicker pace in the half court, getting into our sets quicker, cutting a lot harder, moving the ball so guys can't get into our bodies. Uh, so we're moving a little bit more freely. But having the depth, adding that freshman class that we talked about, right. having guys back that have, have experience in the Big Ten is going to help us be able to be a little more um, – faster but a little more potent offensively well i'm sure that's welcome news to you jalen given how many minutes you played last year <laughs> played more than than anyone in the big 10 give us a sense for this depth uh, I'm, i want to ask each one of you i mean so who are some of the newcomers that weren't a part of this team last year that we can expect to, to make a major impact 
I'll start. I, I would say um, I'll go with two two of our freshmen. I, I think I think all of our freshmen have a chance to be really good players for us. And you know, kind of how much they play depends on them. But the two guys that have kind of stood out in practice, Evan Mahaffey, is just you know a ball of energy. He's everywhere at, at six foot six with long arms and athleticism. And then Keba Jai's been really good for us in terms of what he's been able to do from a skill factor, um, being able to shoot the basketball, being able to score, rebound, do those different things. We're looking forward to good production from him. Seth, who would you go with? Uh, I love I love our freshman group, and uh, I'm excited for their future here at Penn State. But uh, I definitely, like personally, I uh, took uh, Evan Mahaffey under my wing and Jamil Brown, you know, both being wing players and stuff like that. So uh, I just took them under my wing, and, you know, I'll be trying to show them the ropes and, uh, you know, just – and I feel like they could impact winning right away. Uh, I love Kevin's game as well. I feel like Meech is a very skilled big man with great footwork. And um, I feel like Kanye is like a real gritty guard, that, a guard that Coach loves and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, bringing in Cam Winter and Andrew Funk and also uh, Mikey Hen. I feel like all three of them bring in great shooting and, uh, you know, bringing in scoring and stuff like that. So, Yeah, Seth mentioning the, the transfers there. As someone who transferred into this program, Jalen, like what's kind of your advice to them? How have you kind of brought those guys along? Um, well, they've done a great job already, you know, getting in, getting extra workouts, saying, you know, asking as many questions. I mean, they're basically freshmen too, coming into a whole new system. But, you know, I think Cam Winter has done a great job, you know, competing in practice, going up and watching film. And Funk is a lot better than, you know, some people would think or what I've been reading. You know, he can really guard, he can shoot the ball, um, smart kid, smart player. And I think Mikey also surprised some people with the way he shoots it and the way he plays. Jalen Pickett, Seth Lundy, Coach Shrewsbury, thanks so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Looking forward to watching Penn State this year. Best of luck, guys. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Oh, I'll say that's what happens when J.C. Sheldon and Taylor Mikesell are joining us. And by the way, the champs are here. The champs are here. The Big Ten regular season champs last year. 25 wins on the season. As you mentioned, Dave, made it to the Sweet 16. At one point set a Big Ten record with 70 points in one half of basketball. They were a joy to watch, 78 points again, fast-paced, high-scoring, and sure enough, we have Taylor Mikesell, J.C. Sheldon, and the head coach, Kevin McGuff, joining us now. Let's start with this. As we look back at last year and the championship, all of you down the line, tell me what you remember from when you found out that you clinched the regular season title <laughs> because you were on the runway yeah. in an airplane, right? <laughs> Correct. Yeah, we, we actually tried to get them to uh, wait to take off. We, we, didn't quite get there, but we actually got up to what, about the 10 minute mark? Uh -huh. So we had a pretty good idea of what was going on, but we didn't officially know until I think they, they came on the intercom and announced it. And that was pretty cool. That was a great moment for all of us. So we were pretty excited. What was it like? Yeah, I remember them coming on the intercom. We were in the <laughs> air and just everybody started screaming, jumping up and down. It was a pretty cool moment, everybody coming together. And then they were like, the seatbelt sign is <laughs> on people. <laughs> Control yourselves. Uh, it was such a great year last year. Um, do we have the best scoring duo in the country sitting at the desk right now? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the expectation from the head coach. <laughs> so they can answer it from there. <laughs> what are the things you want each of them to get better at this year? There's not a lot for them to get better at, but where would you like them this to improve? This is really, really, really easy. Defense. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> sure. Okay. Uh, how does that manifest itself? How do you guys play better defense this year? Yeah, I think a lot of our defense is, is in that press we like to do, and I think we read each other really well in it, but there's a ton of room for improving, of course, and then obviously our half-court defense, I think, honestly, just working on it every day and, and you know, making sure we, we know that's a point of focus, which we do. Yeah, similarly to what JC said, you know, 22, our, our press break being our uh, backbone, um, you know, communicating, and then obviously, you know, obviously always room for improvement, you know, yeah. always want to be better at something, and if that's, that's what it's going to take to win, then we're going to do it. Give me a specific thing defensively. That you want to make sure they're better at this year i think just uh in general being more consistent in the half court you know we use our press to create tempo and to create turnovers and that's been really good to us and i think if we can marry that with a little more consistency in the half court and and making people just work a little bit harder to score i think that could go a long way is the press you guys run fun or is it tiring <laughs> because i could see it being fun because of the turnovers it leads to it's fun when we're in shape um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So Which we're working on. Yeah, yeah. every we're day. The, yeah, we're building every day. Yeah, is yeah. it fun for you? It, it's. I mean, it's tiring and it is fun. Right now in the season, is it's more tiring. But once we get out there, it's a lot of fun. 
how valuable, I mean, this is the, the genius question, right? That you've already answered a thousand times, but how valuable is having Madison Green back in the lineup? Yeah, I think it's really valuable. I mean, I think last year, obviously, JC did an incredible job um, going from kind of off the ball to being the point guard. And I was quite frankly concerned that it would take away from her scoring. But she found a way to continue to score the ball and make everybody else better. And so it was an amazing job by JC. And you know, now we get a chance to add Madison back in, which will just make us deeper and overall better. How does it feel when she's on the court with you? Yeah, I mean, I think I'm speaking for both of us. We, we're so excited to have her back. She looks great. Um, you know, she, there's no hesitation in her game at all. Um, so we're excited that she's back to, back to normal. And, I mean, it feels good to be out there with her. She's a great player. Um, wherever, she, wherever she's at in our offense, she's going to help us win games. Who don't we talk about enough on your roster, Taylor? I would say Taylor Theory. I oh, think yeah. that's somebody that's yeah. going to have a breakout year. She was really important for us last year. She had a lot of big moments as a freshman. She had an incredible offseason. And the thing that makes her kind of an X factor for us is she's, she's so athletic and she can make plays that other people on our team can't make. Yeah. What about you? I would have to agree. I think her length uh, presents a whole different matchup for us on defense or defensively. Um, and just the stride she's taken in the summer. She's way more confident taking in this, this sophomore jump she's taken. Um, and I think she, she helps us a lot just with length and then the ability to run the floor. You know, they, there's that old saying, comparison is the thief of joy, right? Let me try to steal joy. Good. Well, you do this well, Mike. <laughs> it's a great start, right? <laughs> yeah, it's my forte. Yeah. <laughs> Can you give me another time you saw someone that had a three-point shot like Taylor has? I mean, she's hitting every other one <laughs> that she throws up there. Uh, I'd have to go all the way back to when I was an assistant at Notre Dame. We had a, a young lady named uh, Alicia Retai who led the country in three-point shooting. And... Um, but uh, I would say Taylor's more special, and Alicia was very cautious in the shots that she took, and didn't want to take a you know a contested shot, and you know Taylor will certainly do that. So, <laughs> but by her coach's design, I, I I encourage it. I don't I don't like she's such a special player. The last thing I'm ever going to do is hold her back. I want her out there playing her game and playing free, and we certainly reap the benefits when she feels good about how she's playing, and she's an incredible player, and just really happy to have her in the program. What's it like when you're in that zone? It's freeing, honestly. Um, it was something I was looking for when I came here, just the freedom that, that Coach McGuff gives his players in the system. Um, you don't have to play with any caution or any regard for, for messing up, and I think that's when you, you see the best basketball being played. How would you try to defend Taylor when she's oh, shooting I, <laughs> I do it every day. <laughs> um, honestly, I think guarding each other is what makes us, what makes us so good, but um, – Obviously, I try not to let her shoot. Um, there's not much help defense when I'm Gardner. <laughs> I don't know about other teams, but um, she's outstanding. I mean, awesome to play with. I always say it's easy to play with her because most likely you give her the ball, she, she's going to get a bucket. What's it like playing with Rebecca Mikolashikova? <laughs> Bex is awesome. Um, super vocal, especially going into this, this last year How or so? her next year. She's, I mean, you, you, you can obviously hear her accent, but she's super vocal talking about ball screens just talking she wants to be heard on the court um and then just her her lightness about the game she approaches the game in a in a way that that there's joy involved and you know you want to be on the court with her she's somebody that is really fun to play with she's much more vocal right now now i have a problem because occasionally she'll start talking to slovakia i'm like are you talking to me or are you talking to yourself and, and i like so are you i'm not insulting me right yeah now? that's what I, that's what i'm getting at yeah. like are you are you mad at me and you talking to me so I got to have a conversation about that other than that, but she's had a great off season and she's a really, really great kid. One thing I noticed with your game uh, statistically, uh, JC was uh, steals were up in the past year. How come? Um, quite honestly, it, that, that goes to our team. Um, not me. I think that a lot of our press, um, we pressure the ball and then sometimes we get turnovers out of it. So a lot of times I'll get credit for those and, and it's Ricky. It's all, it's Ricky or, or last year it's Braxton or even team Mike, um, who should get the credit, but, um, that's something I, I want to hope to continue. I think we would all like to do that. So, but a lot of that comes from our press. Yeah. I would also add to that. Uh, JC's extremely quick, and people don't realize how quick she is. And she can really, she's got great in, skills in anticipating plays and running through passing lanes, uh, as good as I've seen in a long time. Last question, but the most important one: Is the dub chain a one and done, or is it back this year? It's definitely coming it, back. Yeah, it's, <laughs> coming back. It's, it's coming, coming back. It's Back and better than ever. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> it's Look forward to seeing it a bunch. JC, Taylor, and Kevin, thanks for your time. Have a great season. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.
Yes, this is a look at Leilani Kapanis and McKenna Marisa. Oh, posing. <laughs> yeah, dropping the deuces. I see it. Okay. <laughs> We're here in Minneapolis on Big Ten Basketball Media Days, and this is a Penn State Lady Lions team that has an awful lot of potential. At one point last year, they scored 120 points in a game early on in the season. McKenna passed 1,000 points in her career. Carolyn Keegers in her fourth year in charge of Penn State. And sure enough, Leilani McKenna and Carolyn join us right now. And when you do these media day shows, you know, we're on air for six, eight hours, whatever it is. You don't always remember stuff in the moment. But I remember <laughs> the best line from last year came from the lady on the end. You remember what it was. Uh, I'll tell you if you forgot. Something about it's fun to have fun. <laughs> Having fun is more fun. The quote of the day, I loved it. Best quote. <laughs> Good to have you guys here with us. That's uh, stuff we worked on the off season too, Mike. We, we worked, worked on, on that? We worked on responses. <laughs> oh, yeah. We definitely did. Uh, let's go down the line. Each of you okay. finish uh, this sentence, and, and it can be in your own way. You can disagree with the coach. That's okay. okay. Uh, this team this year will play its best if we share the basketball and take care of the basketball. Finish off at two feet. <laughs> play defense and play with pace. Sorry, the answer was have fun. Oh. Sorry, oh. McKenna. I thought you were going to get that one. And have fun. Because <laughs> it's more fun. Uh, tell me about her. What makes her special? Oh, God. She's a relentless worker. She, she's hungry. Uh, she's unselfish. Honestly, almost to a fault at times. You know, she really just cares about Penn State winning. That, that's it. And her teammates know that. They feel that. She's gained respect not only from her coaches, but her, her teammates. And I can't wait for her to get the respect she deserves from the country. Yeah. What was it like? I mean, you don't often have sophomores here at Media Day, but that speaks to the impact that Leilani had mm -hmm. last year on the team. But instead of my words, you tell me the words, the impact she had on the team. Yes. I mean, obviously Leilani plays so physical, so hard every day. She lays everything on the floor. She plays with heart where she's really stepped up this off season is becoming a leader, a vocal leader and really running our defense. McKenna hit it on the head as we need to be a better defensive team. And she's taken that personally and she's going to run the show for us on the defensive end. And, um, you know, I'm saying it here that she's going to be the best defender in the country someday. Wow. Okay. So how, how do, what steps need to be taken to be a better team defensively? What are the two or three things you guys have to do? Yeah, I think, um, the most important thing is in practices, we have to compete with each other and push each other um, and get up in each other's faces. Um, and, and that's where it starts, and that transfers over into the games. But it starts at practice. Yeah, I think she hit it on the, hit it on the head with that. But just having like that dog mentality where you're not going to score on me. And if you do, mm -hmm. then that's the last time you're going to score the rest of the game. Yeah. <laughs> what is it like the other side of the ball? When you're trying to score and you've got that lady over there and you know you can give her the ball mm -hmm. and she's going to do something impressive with it. Oh, yeah. I mean, anytime we need a bucket, I'm looking right at Kenna, getting into the paint, dishing it out to her, and I know she's going to hit it. How is this program different now from four years ago when you took over? Oh, it's night and day. You know, we it's literally a different team, a different personality. I think it starts with leadership. You know, we have vets now who have been here who know what the standard is, who know what we're looking for every day, who are culture driving. Um, Anna Camden and McKenna Marisa and Leilani, the three who have been here um, and, and weathered the storm and have been loyal, stayed the course, trusted the process, and now are, are going to reap the benefits of it this year. How is your head coach different in the years you've been there? Oh, <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Coach Keeger's pretty consistent, I'll give her that. <laughs> she's, a, she's a competitor, always, and she stays that. Um, and she's hungry, passionate, and, and that's consistent. So, um, yeah, I, I think cons she's pretty consistent, like I said. Nothing changes. She's always hungry, how, always competitive. How is she passionate? I mean, sh she wants to win in every area of her life. Um, that's on the court, everything off the court. She wants us to win. Um, so that's, that's just her. And that's why I love playing for her. So, if you guys are to win more games this year, when? Part, excuse me. My apologies. When you win more games this year, how important is it that there's a second scoring option? That that there's not too much of a burden on McKenna. I think it's vital. Uh, the ball needs to move inside, outside. It's got to swing left to right. Um, our team knows that. Take the pressure off McKenna. Be you know three level scores from every position. I think our speed and our versatility and our depth this year is going to set us apart. Um, McKenna knows that. She knows you know she wants her assist to go up, her turnovers to go down, and she's really paying attention to that. But we have a lot of weapons this year, and uh, I'm excited you know for them to play off each other as teammates. 
let me ask you about some of them. Uh, Anna Camden, she was a good scorer in high school. How much more can she be effective offensively this year? Uh, a lot, you know, and I think now that we have more length and um, more presence in the post, it allows her to play her natural position, which is more of a stretch four, um, even putting her at the swing as a three sometimes to be able to, you know, stretch the floor because she really can knock it down and she's one of the best shooters on our team. So mm -hmm. I think just giving her that role and her paying attention to that has allowed her to have a kind of a weight lifted off and she's stroking it from the outside right now. What about Allie Brigham, another one who at her previous stop, she scored pretty well at GW. Yeah, Allie's done a phenomenal job, you know, getting her body in a position where she can play, you know, three, four minutes at a time. And she's um, really bought into our pace of play. And she's scoring really well from the block right now. She's worked on counter moves. She's worked on her power moves. And honestly, her rebounding out of her area. Yeah. Um, when was the last time Eric McLaughlin showed up? <laughs> Um, we need him to come back immediately. <laughs> We're working on it. We're working on it. To, to it's everybody. been it's been too long. It's been too long. Eric McLaughlin was last year his debut. At two years ago, well, we were trying to keep it a secret for our newbies. We were <laughs> oh, going to try no, to get him. Yeah. So hopefully the team is not watching right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, just for the audience' sake, hopefully none of the Eric McLaughlin was a uh, uh, someone on this desk might have had a disguise and uh, asked a couple questions at media day to Kelly Jaycott, who did yeah. not realize. But that person, there was a person underneath she knew. We discussed I need a better mustache that stays on there. So yeah, it was, it was falling off. It was, uh, it was pretty nice. A <laughs> <laughs> um, couple freshmen this year, handful of transfers. What should we look for from the newcomers this season? Yeah, I think you said freshman. Shay Chesky, I think, is going to be one of the best freshmen in the country oh, this wow. year. Um, she's going to play a lot for us. She can play the point and put McKenna off ball a little bit, and uh, she shoots it from deep. Um, she's shifty. She can play off a ball screen. So I look for her to do a lot for us this season. Uh, Transfer-wise, you know, Tanaya Thompson, uh, I said this in the press conference, you know, she's one of the most underrated guards out there right now, and she's going to be a big catalyst for us in that backcourt. Uh, Shania Pinsu coming from Oregon. She's got experience of winning a JUCO national championship. Uh, she's a terror on defense. She's, she's going to be great for Leilani up there at our press and length. And then Alexa Williamson is, is probably one of the most athletic speed demons as a forward that you can find. And, um, I mean, she's competing with these two in sprints every day. So when you have your five-man beating your fastest two players in sprints, it's, it's going to be a good day for us. You know, we, we in the media talk an awful lot, especially the last couple of years ago, about the transfer portal. Like, as players, does it does it feel weird? Does it feel normal? Like, how do you guys feel about the transfer portal? Yeah, um, I I think it, it's, it can be good or bad, you know, and very good in our case um, this year with, you know, the new people that we have. Um, so, yeah, I think for us, I, I want to say it's good for us this year. <laughs> um, but it is, it's, it's, it's uh it's weird too it's weird because it's so it's so new you know with the all the new regulations and stuff with it so um yeah i don't know what do you think like i think it's definitely helping us this year yeah. but it's definitely can be weird playing against your own teammate uh but yeah i think it it'll be really good for us yeah. it's it's one of those things that's become more common in the, especially in the last year or two another thing that's like that um, it's still rare and it's still very impressive, but it's triple doubles. I mean, we used to almost never see that. Now, some people get a triple double and they're normal people. They get rebounds, assists, and points. Mm -hmm. Not you. <laughs> you had to do it with steals just to show off. Really, McKenna? <laughs> Sorry, I had to. I had to do it. <laughs> what was it like? Oh, um, I mean, it was amazing, you know, and just to, to celebrate with my teammates, too, afterwards, you know, them hyping me up. Um, it, it was an unreal feeling. So, yeah, it was, it was awesome. Do you know it when it's happening in the game? Yeah, I have a pretty good pulse on it. You, yeah. you can kind of tell, you know, um, the rhythm of the game. And obviously we as coaches check the stat sheet quite frequently during timeouts, during half times. But I think both these young women have a chance to get triple doubles this year. Um, no doubt with their versatility, their rebounding ability at their size, at their position, and whether it's assist or steals, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if both of them have a few. Yeah, I, I look, look forward to that. That'd be pretty <laughs> impressive. Um, give me a player that uh, maybe we haven't asked you about or we haven't gone in depth enough that you think we're not talking about now, but by the middle of the end of the season on your team, we're going to be talking about. I think Ali Campbell would be a yeah. really, really big player for us this year. You can count on her to knock that three down anytime you pass the ball. She's a great shooter, so 
Yeah, yeah to Allie. I agree. Completely agree with that. Um, Allie is a three-level scorer. Um, she can rebound. She can pass. Um, she's unselfish. So I think people are going to really like seeing her play this year. Mm -hmm. Last one before we let you guys go. Um, describe for me what it's like playing in the Big Ten because we were talking earlier, it's it's just at a different level and, yep. and players are leaving and it still stays at the same level that it wasn't at five, six, seven years ago. Yeah. What's it like? Yeah, I think um, just, you know, you never know, like the top team can lose to a bottom team any day. Um, it's super competitive. We're going against some of the best players in the country. Um, and you know, we're up for the challenge every single day. Like that's, that's why we're in the Big Ten. That's why we came to it because you know, we want to play against the best players in the country and um, and compete with them every single day. So, Leilani? Yeah, it's definitely a grind, but at the end of the day, competing against the best will make you one of the best. So mm -hmm. it's it's really good. Yeah. It is. It's the best of the best. And um, in order to be the best, you have to beat the best. And that's why, like McKenna said, uh, we came here to Penn State. And we want to build a dynasty and we want to do it one brick at a time. And uh, we're really excited to play against the best players, but also the, the best coaches. Carolyn, Leilani, McKenna, thanks for being here. Thanks for bringing the fun. Always great talking to you guys. Have a great season. Back in our Media Day special, the defending champs, the Wisconsin Badgers, won a share of the Big Ten regular season title now two of the last three years. Greg Dard, the Big Ten Coach of the Year, twice in that stretch, including last year. They lost a lottery pick in Johnny Davis. Brad Davison gone as well. And, yes, we checked the roster. He is actually gone. It is true. Uh, but we got some uh, some veterans back here leading the team, including Chucky Hepburn and Tyler Wall, along with Coach Greg Gard. Guys, really good to have you. Coach, you were the coach of the year last year. We were sitting here a year ago, and people were picking Wisconsin 10th, and now they're picking them 9th, right? We moved up. <laughs> yeah, I know. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so w when you look back on a year that had you named as the coach of the year, that had this team, including these guys, maybe surprising – quite a few people what are you proudest of well I think anytime you get an individual award like that it's because you have the team of the year and that's what we've always focused on let's be the best team we can be and we really saw it we couldn't talk about it much in media day last year because we hadn't proven anything yet but through the summer last year I, I saw that team coming together and thought we had a chance to be pretty good and we're in the process with this group now of putting taking those same type of steps and seeing how this this year can unfold okay so for those who may have picked you ninth do you have a similar feeling this year like are you willing to make any predictions no here, i don't get into predicting they <laughs> they know me well enough we'll i will just get ready for tomorrow's practice that's the next thing on my mind you know it's it's interesting though guys you would have tremendous insight into this over the last 20 years right no one in the big tens won more games than wisconsin no program has been more consistent than wisconsin and you don't do that without culture there's there's just been an ingrained culture clearly externally you you can sense it internally how would you define that culture i'm interested from each of you chucky why don't you start right it definitely starts uh when we first get on campus in the summer it starts in june whether we're doing stuff on the court together or off off the uh, off the court together so they got to build that chemistry off and on the court together tyler yeah i mean it starts at the top with our leadership with coach guard um, we take it every day every day we're attacking it taking it um attacking the weight room attacking practice um, and just trying to get better every single day. Tyler, I have really great vision. I couldn't help but notice. <laughs> I know it's very subtle and understated, but you have a fairly significant ring uh -huh. uh, on your finger. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about that uh, that ring you're wearing. Um, yeah, this this one was actually from uh, my freshman year. Okay. Uh, when we won the Big Ten that year. Um, we got one more coming in, and uh, that's our goal every year, win a Big Ten championship, make the NCAA tournament, and make a deep run. So you wear those around campus just kind of <laughs> casually? or what uh, No, that? it's got to be a special occasion. I thought today <laughs> I thought today fit for uh, bringing it out. Yeah, absolutely. Well, what's it like, though, to, you know, to, to see, I don't want to call it the fruits of the labor, but to see the guys kind of take pride in, in the accomplishments? Yeah, that I think had. that, you know, the tradition that we have at Wisconsin, you mentioned the culture, which is, a, you know, one of the, paramounts of what we do and how we do it but it's these guys they get it done every day and the guys that have come before them and the guys that will come after them so these two here um, have done a terrific job we also have Steve Crowell here today I know he's right. not there's not room for him here up here on the st uh, podium but uh, these guys are what it's about and, and why you do it and to watch them go through it and develop and grow and and step into different roles each year is the rewarding part and like I said I couldn't be more proud of these two and how they've helped lead this young group.
So you guys took a trip this summer to France. In fact, it was documented on, right. on the Big Ten Network, really good, good program, the, the big trip. What was the biggest thing you took out of it competitively, Chucky? We'll, we'll get to the off-the-court stuff. For on sure. the court, you went 4-0. What would you learn about your team? Yeah, for sure. Definitely learned the, the toughness of this team, you know, going over there, playing against 30-year-olds. Um, definitely not the strongest. Uh, we're th talking about us, but uh, th they were very competitive and tough over there. So just to see the guys have the grit and toughness to be able to co compete against older guys, you know, that I love that about our team. Tyler, how about from your point of view? Um, I saw a lot of growth out of the guys that weren't really playing last year, and along with the freshmen and the new transfers that we have. Um, we were able to get those four games over in France, and uh, they were able to go through some learning learning curves uh, over there before we really started the season up. So to me, the most amazing part of that, kind of externally, when you think about college and the learning experience, is to experience a different culture. And, and obviously, there's so much interesting stuff in France. What resonated with you the most? Like, what's the thing you'll kind of take most away from it, Tyler? Um, yeah. Well, the off-the-court stuff was great. Um, building that relationship with my teammates that I not necessarily knew before, um, along with the new guys. Um, but my favorite trip was going to Normandy. Um, that was a good experience, something that I wouldn't have been able to do if I wasn't here on this trip. Um, and it was just very moving to go there and uh, see all the soldiers um, in, the, in the cemetery and uh, kind of get moved through that whole whole experience. Yeah, one of the most powerful things I know I've ever seen, and you think about I saw it when I was right around your guys' age, and to think about these were people who were your age, right, who were coming across and, you know, sacrificing the greatest sacrifice of all. What, when, when you saw that, when you saw the, all those grave sites in Normandy, what, what went through your head? Absolutely. You know, it just reminded me to take nothing for granted. You know, these guys were doing, fighting for our country so that we could be able to do stuff like this and be able to have, be on the big stage like this. So um, definitely take nothing for granted. You know, every day is a blessing. What about the other side, Coach? I saw you went to Monaco as well. We did. We did <laughs> Monaco. That's a, that's a little bit different, right? It's a little, it was a yeah, study that's, in contrast. A, yeah, yeah, there is definitely a change there. We got to ride, did a little jet ski touring, which I know is coming up in I think maybe show number three. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, BTN did an awesome job chronicling that trip. And it um, seemed like they were everywhere we turned, they were. They were there, too. So they I don't think they missed anything that we did. But these guys mentioned it. It's just the, the chemistry and the camaraderie. And, obviously, the competition is really good. Um, but also the experiences these guys get that maybe we wouldn't have if it wasn't for this type of trip. So uh, I know we made the most of it, I think, the, the show will definitely chronicle all that and help propel us to get us ready for this coming year. Let's talk about this coming year. You do have some newcomers. I mean, look, you, you lost Johnny Davis. You lost Brad Davison. Um, those guys, obviously, Johnny Davis was just a fabulous player. Right. Brad Davison has been your leader, really an extension of you on the court for, for quite some time. How do you fill those voids? Well, I think you leadership always evolves organically. So we've had leaders of all shapes and sizes. And it doesn't mean you have to be the guy that talks the most or has the loudest voice. Some do it by example, uh, and sometimes it's by committee. So I think the neat thing and the exciting thing about this team is there are questions that I don't know the answers to yet. So Tyler's done an awesome job of stepping in. Even last year, he started to walk into that leadership role, taking a bigger role with it this year. Chucky also is much more comfortable with his voice and knowing now that Johnny and Brad are, are gone. He's going to be in situations where he's going to have, you know, game-winning plays in his hands, um, much like he did at the end of the Purdue game when he banked that one in. You did call bank, by the way, right? Right yeah. in front of me. Yeah. Um, but That's his story anyway. Yes, uh, and he's sticking to it. Yes. Uh, but, you know, you just have the transfers. You, you mentioned a little bit Max Klesman, Kamari McGee have transitioned very seamlessly. Uh, and guys have gotten better. I think that's the things the guys that have sat in the wings and kind of waited their turn uh, will step in and be ready to help, you know, our three guys that are returning starters with Steve and, and Tyler and Chucky. Among those newcomers, I'm interested from each one of you, who has stood out to you the most in the preseason? Yeah, most definitely. No, everybody stood out to me in the preseason, but for for right now, I, I would say uh, Connor Isijan. You know, he's definitely taken strides forward since the first uh, week he's been on campus to right now. You know, defensively, he's gotten a lot better. He's finding his spots on offense, knowing where to go, and I really like about them, like that about him, and um, he has a beautiful uh, stroke, too, so I love that. What about from your point of view, Tyler? Yeah, um, everyone's everyone's really attacked the summer, but one guy that really sticks out to me is Max Klesman. He's a guy that you just really want on your team. He's going to dive on the on the ground for the loose ball. 
Um, he gets the game of basketball, and it's just a guy that you're, you're going to go to war with. Transfer from Wofford coming back home to the state of Wisconsin. Guys, ton of fun to visit with you. Uh, speaking of coming back home, you had fun back home here? <laughs> oh, yeah. It was a short trip, but it was definitely a good, All good right, to be good, home. Good. Uh, have a great year this year. Looking forward, to, as always, to seeing what the Badgers have in store. Take care, Thanks, fellas. Thank you. Really Thank good you. to visit with you. And here's a look at what they have done. It was a tough year with a lot of obstacles they had to go through last season. But we did get to see Susie Merchant's 300th Spartan win, 500th career win last year. Part of a 15-win season. We're glad to have Susie Merchant joining us here alongside a couple honorable mention all Big Ten players, Matilda Eck and Didi Hageman. Um, first off, best ping pong player is? Tyre Parks. <laughs> By the way, Tyre is off camera raising her hand saying it's me. I think they said that because she sets really good screens and they're afraid of practice tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> they have to say she's good at ping pong yeah, they otherwise. Just, yeah. um, okay, uh, the tough questions out of the way first, I promise. Yeah. You got hit with the worst string of bad luck I can think of of a team in so long. Losing two stars before the season begins. You lost an important player to concussion. You had COVID multiple times within the program with yourself. Like, yeah. what? Ha who did you anger in the world? I don't know, but we gave that to the basketball gods last year. So this year, not we're not going to have that problem. That's the way I look at it. someone else's turn. Yeah, you're um, due. Let somebody else take that. Yeah, that was tough. But, you know, I was really proud of these guys. You know, I, I kid around. Like, these two were freshmen, and by the end of the season, they were like fifth-year grad transfers <laughs> by the amount of minutes that they played and the role that they played. But they grew up pretty quickly. They contributed at a high level. Um, and then certainly with what we have coming back, what we have coming in, it's it's, it's an exciting, bright future. Well, and it says something to have two sophomores sitting up here. I mean, you could take anyone in your roster, but the mm. experience they got last year, I assume, is part of the reason why you wanted them here. Yeah, well, and they're all freshman team. I mean, they're very impactful. I mean, Didi's um, one of the best passers I've ever been around in the coaching game, and Matilda can, I mean, she can shoot it from the parking lot, you know. Um, so I, I think you have two really special kids that, you know, really want to win at a high level, at, you no know, question about it, but also can contribute with their own personal skills that make a difference. That's some pretty high praise. She's the best passer maybe she's ever seen. What makes her so good at dishing the ball? I mean, she just like sees everything. I mean, if someone is open, she like she makes sure that she gets the ball like every time. And what makes her so good at the three point shot? Uh, I mean, you can pass it to her whenever on the perimeter, and she's just gonna knock it down. Like we just have so much trust in her. When did the the three point shot? change in your mind like I feel like now it used to be like yeah get right to the line and shoot yeah. it and now there are so many players who are just used to shooting it from two three four five feet behind the line yeah well and this one especially I mean, when you come from the international game um, I mean they that line's been back back for a long time for her I think that's a big transition sometimes for high schoolers when they come in now that line's even further back than it was right. you know a couple seasons ago so I think that is uh you know can you be accurate everybody wants to be a shooter you got to be a maker right? right and that's what Matilda was I mean she can square her hips and get that shot off pretty quickly uh, let me go back to the injuries just for a second was there was there something you tried to do as a head coach to keep spirits up that maybe you wouldn't have done in a normal year? No, I mean, honestly, they were a great group. You know, I, I felt for them. I, you know, there's so many times I just, my heart went out to them. I mean, you have like Ty at one time was playing the three spot for us. You know, we're playing three post players and she probably really liked it. Um, <laughs> she probably wants me to drop a couple more three point plays for her. But, you know, I just, I think they were willing to do whatever it took. And I was very proud of this group. I mean, let me tell you, with what happened to us injury wise, that season could have gone a, a, a very different way and it didn't it didn't because of these kids here it didn't because of the kids that are already on our roster and even the injured kids found ways to contribute even if they couldn't physically contribute what was the positive for you guys as we were saying is the playing time you get right I assume you didn't expect to get that much playing time when you came in last year right yeah what was that like I mean, it was a great, great experience. We definitely learned a lot from, you know, getting to play that much. Uh, so that's some, that's definitely something that we will be able to use this year. Yeah, I feel like we can use it coming into this year as an advantage because, like, we know what to come and we're not in our, you know, still like our freshman mindset. Like, we've experienced, like, literally every game, like, 40 minutes. So I just feel like it was a good experience. I'm going to have Coach go last on this one. 
uh, so she can clean up <laughs> if you guys miss something. <laughs> what will the team's identity be this year? Both of you answer, and then we'll let Susie answer. You want to go first? You can go first. Uh, I feel like our identity will be playing hard. I feel like we have a very talented team this year, and we all just want to win games, and we want a champion, a championship under our belt. So we're going to do whatever it takes to, you know, win. Yeah, I mean, I agree with Didi. Like, playing hard, especially on defense, I feel like we have a, you know, we have a better chance of playing hard this year, this year since we have a much deeper bench. Uh, and I would also say, like, our versatility. We have so many more, like, threats this year than I felt like we had last year. Were they right? Yeah, I okay. mean, the defense, you know, that's kind of the, definitely where we put a lot of focus in. And it wasn't their fault. I mean, we... You know, our thing was like, just don't fall out. I mean, I remember Didi, I went to you, I'm like, whatever you do, don't get a third foul. You know, I mean, we were just at that point. So, I mean, I, I really think we bought in, they bought into that side, and that's kind of what the playing hard thing is. And the versatility, I mean, those three fresh, or those three transfers that we have were impact transfers too. Mm -hmm. I mean, one's connected to, to um, Matilda and Steph. She's a Swedish young lady and really good, really good player on both sides of the ball. You got Kamari McDaniel, who was a second leading scorer in the Big Ten yeah, how'd you in 1920. Well, she's coming home, and she <laughs> should have been a Spartan in the first place. Um, um, and then, obviously, Gabby Elliott, who played with Didi. So, like, there's there's some really strong transfers also, but they're the right transfers, right? They're not just transfer. They're, like, Spartan transfers. And they've been really successful where they've been before. And so when she's talking about versatility and depth, that's what we're talking about. And, and to replace Ania Cloudin, like, you need that. You need multiple yeah. players to be, as you said, a Spartan transfer. But what makes someone? A Spartan transfer. Well, to me, like that, that kind of buy-in, that built, that toughness, that grit. I mean, we've always been a blue-collar team. I mean, we don't have nothing's beneath them. They roll up their sleeves. They go to work. They're charge taken. Get on the floor, diving for loose balls. I mean, that physicality piece. I think we had to kind of back away from a little bit last year just because of our depth. I mean, it was like literally, if anyone got in foul trouble, I was just like. What are we going to do now? So they, you know, to their defense, I think it was a lot on me as a coach that I had to just kind of do what I had to do. But we're redefining, retooling, kind of getting back to who we are, and that's Michigan State basketball. I mean, the way I hear that is you now have permission to get in foul trouble. I mean, that's my <laughs> takeaway from this discussion, ladies. That's yeah, basically what she said. I'm really not sure how I was going for that because well, we, we'll we really do work on verticality and not and walling up. Come on, Mike. <laughs> Dee Dee, Matilda, and Susie, great seeing you. I hope you guys have a great season. Look forward to talking. Thanks for having Thank us. You. Appreciate Thank it. You. There are indeed. It is year two for Ben Johnson, the former Gopher team captain at his alma mater. You see a lot of turnover, as you mentioned, Mike, but they do return Jamison Battle, who went over 20 points 11 different times last year. And he joins us now alongside his coach, Ben Johnson. And Ben, it wasn't just your first year as Minnesota's coach. It was your first year overall as a head coach. So what were the biggest things you learned about yourself as you embarked on that journey for the first time? There was a lot. You know, um, we all have a plan until you kind of get smacked in the face. And so uh, one of the things I just realized is, is you, get, you have to be who you are and that there's a lot of ways to do this. There's a lot of ways to skin a cat and, and be successful, but you got to be consistent in, in who you are so that the people underneath you keep that buy-in and they, and they know what they're going to get and they know what they're going to expect. And I think just continue to surround yourselves with the right people, whether that's staff or, or players that you recruit. So, Jamison, who is Coach Johnson after one year of playing with him? Yeah, I think I've said it a lot today. You know, he's a leader of men. I think we all buy into what he has, what he has brought for us and his plan for us. You know, I think last year we laid the foundation down, and now it's about building it up. And I think that we have the right guys, and Coach has brought in the right staff, the right, the right people to build this program up. So much of what you do early on is trying to instill culture into a team. I'm curious, I, I wanna hear from Jamison first. Uh, ben, I, I, I like your thoughts too. After someone plays Minnesota, what do you want them to say? Like this is a team that does what well? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is just, it's a team that's connected. Connectivity I think is the biggest thing for us. And I think we have a group right now that's so connected. And I think another thing about us is we're just so gritty. You know, in practice every day, we're out here competing. And I think that's the biggest thing for this team is just to stay competing and to stay in the moment. And I think if we do that, only good things will happen. Coach, what is that culture and identity? How do you define that piece for your team? I agree. And I think it, it starts with, with leadership. You know, uh, JMO's done an unbelievable job of that. 
we kind of have a, a different mix this year of four guys that have got experience at either a high major or a competitive level, and then you got really six players that are new. And I think we're going to go as our leadership and our older guys take us. And, you know, Jameson's done a great job of when we do compete, he sets the tone for how that should look. And, you know, everybody else needs to follow along. And when your, your leaders and your better players are doing that, uh, as a coach, it puts you in a position to make sure that everybody else is following along and you've got more, uh, more backing. So aside from Jamison, who are some of those leaders on this team this year who are emerging? I think all of our upperclassmen have done a, a pretty good job. You know, Dawson Garcia has played high major basketball, high level basketball. He's played at programs that know success. Um, you know, you look at Tor Samuels, who comes in. Uh, he's played a lot of minutes in the Ivy League. He's out of a lot of experiences. He's smart, intelligent, so he's got that leadership to him. And then Talon Cooper from Moorhead State, you know, played on a really good team, was a big factor in, in their team's success. So those guys are like-minded. They're all competitive by nature. They all want to win, and they do it the right way, where they do it not only by example of how they act, but verbally, you know, they challenge our young guys to, to be better. And if we can get a little bit better each and every day, we're going to be able to move the needle when it really matters come January, February. Jamison Dawson Garcia is a really interesting piece. I mean, this is for anyone who follows college basketball. He's been a really, really big time recruit, as we know, had some personal stuff, unfortunately, go on uh, off the court surrounding his family last year, which cut his season short. Comes back home now to Minnesota. Give us a sense of his skill set and what he brings. Yeah, I mean, he's a player. You know, he can play inside and out. He can shoot the ball outside, pick and pop. He can pick and roll. There's so many things that he can do. And the way he impacts games, not only by just his play, but his, just his talk and his energy, you know, it's it's unmatched. I haven't seen anything like it. And he just he just brings that level of juice that – elevates everyone on the team so he's he's a special player and a special kid you know ben it's interesting you had to go into the portal by necessity last year you've gone a little bit less this year i mean you couldn't have gone in more than yeah. than you did last year i mean you took over and you had like two players left but um what's the balancing act there like what do you ultimately want this to look like as a program in terms of transfers versus high school guys it's a million dollar question you know i think we'll always be a developmental program so you, you know you want to have a a good core of young high school talent that you can get better and that will kind of stick with the process and you'll be able to see coming as a freshman and graduated seniors. Um, and then I think just because of the landscape, you've got to be adaptable and you have to at least have a, a, a an ability to go in the portal because you just don't know the landscape or what it's going to look like come the spring sometimes. So uh, that flexibility I think is going to be key. But at the end of the day, we're always going to be a developmental first program and, and try to really uh, bring in guys from the high school level and develop and grow those guys. So tell us about the young guys this year. Really excited about the young talent that we have. Um, you know, I think it's guys that uh, are about the right stuff in terms of they, they want to be here. Um, they're very prideful of playing at the University of Minnesota. They understand the culture that, you know, Jameson and, and, the, and the class previous that has instilled. Um, and they have the talent to compete at this level. And now, it's, again, it's about just are you willing to put the work in to get better? And, you know, because of two injuries, some of those guys are, and most of those guys are going to have a chance to jump in early, which I think is good. You know, um, sometimes the uh, you got to be thrown into the fire uh, to learn. And so, you know, I think that process is going to be accelerated. So it'll be interesting. It might be a little ugly early, but I know over time for them and for our team and program, um, you know, we're going to make sure this is a positive. He's talked about the injuries, and, man, it's just heartbreaking. I mean, Parker Fox and Isaiah Enan, two guys you lost last year, and now you lose them again this year. What do you say to young people when that happens to them? It was tough. You know, there's no, um, there's no book <laughs> that says as a coach how do you handle – uh, guys that have gone through two ACLs back-to-back -back years because nobody, unless you were here, understands the grind, the daily grind that they did with rehab and the excruciating grind that they did with rehab and how excited they were to be back and how each of them looked really good and were confident and were energetic and were, you know, it, they knew it was their time. And then to see that happen um, – you gotta you gotta own it, and, and and it's okay to say you know this this stinks, and and have that feeling. But then 
once you've had that, now it's the, the rehab process. And now we got to start, you know, turning our mind frame into, all right, I'm, a, I'm tough enough to handle this again. And there's going to be light at the end of the tunnel. And we're going to do everything we can to make sure they still feel part of our team. Um, and we'll be looking forward to having them whenever they're ready. Yeah, just really crushing. I, I feel terrible for them. I feel terrible for everyone associated with the team as well. It's just so hard to see that. Uh, Jameson, for you, as you come back this year, you know, last year it was the great unknown for all of you. Now, as Coach mentioned, you're one of the leaders on this team. I know it's very personal for you. Your sister is, is playing at Minnesota this year as well. What, what do you want to kind of instill in your new teammates about this university? Yeah, I think it's just about presenting, presenting the university in a good light and I think giving us time to develop. You know, I think the biggest thing is just I'm one of the guys who understands the ins and outs of the Big Ten having played in it for a year. So I think it's just about me telling these guys, you know, what the Big Ten's all about. And I think not only I've done a good job, I think everyone who's been here before has done a good job. You know, I think the guys are ready and they're, they're chomping at the bit. And I think we're, we're really hungry to get out here and get out, get out and play. Well, Jamison, really looking forward to, to watching you guys play this year. Ben, congratulations on a job well done. Last year got off to a great start, and I know you feel like maybe you can carry some of the momentum forward this year as you retool the Gophers. Guys, thanks so much, and uh, safe travels home. <laughs> I appreciate <laughs> Thank it. You. Thank you. All right, Thank see you, you fellas.